are on YouTube, that's fine too. Doesn't matter. But yeah, thanks for watching. Happy Valentine's Day. And uh, wait, 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 uh, hold on, Hal. Hold on, Hal. I'm oh, getting a phone oh. call. Who? Getting a phone call. Uh, hello, Mordo residents. Hello, Mordo. This is Uncultured Swine. I was just calling to distract you while I take over the Nolan episode. <laughs> oh yeah? How dumb do you think I am? <laughs> Hello and welcome to Too Many Movies, the podcast where we discuss DVDs, Blu-rays, and even the occasional VHS tape. I'm your host, Hal, and... Oh, hey, wait a minute. I have a The Prestige on 4K uh, box right here in my hand. Why, this is directed by Christopher Nolan. Well, that can only mean one thing. Uh, hey, Mordo, you're here. Another Nolan episode. And... Swine, you're here too? Wait a minute. Wait, what? Who, who, who let blood into the room? <laughs> Jin -jin. <laughs> uh, finally, a third person to join us on a Nolan episode. Oh, Mordo, welcome back, as usual. I mean, it, this is your third episode this year you're on. This is the year of Mordo. I'm on um, a roll, baby. It begins today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah the year exactly. of the Mordo oh, begins today. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> guys i already and, messed up 2025 will be on my year okay <laughs> every episode then. yeah exactly every episode <laughs> uh and ben of course welcome back always happy to have you on to well, talk pleasure to be here whatever. once again yeah so obviously since the prestige is a nolan movie i obviously had to bring on mordo but Ben, you obviously wanted to talk about it, too, because I remember you said, like, hey, I really want to be on an episode where we talk about The Prestige. And I'm like, oh, yeah, well, that would be part of the Nolanology, as it were. Um, so because you haven't been here uh, before, Swine, uh, I guess maybe just real quick, give us your quick thoughts on Christopher Nolan in general. I, I don't know. Do you have, like, anything you want to say about him? I mean, yeah, I mean, I think I'm fairly standard experience like i watched like i believe is the dark knight it was one of the batman i actually it might have been dark knight rises the first one i watched um okay. and obviously uh, oh. what a first one. <laughs> I, I, I i still like uh, hold on as, yeah. as a first exposure that's still a really good first exposure it's not like a bad movie fair enough uh, fair enough yeah yeah, yeah. yeah it was yeah, really cool enough. to watch that so i was like i don't know eighth grade or something or probably low, like 12 or something um but yeah, like yeah, the Batman's were obvious, or yeah, the Dark Knight trilogy is obviously awesome. Um, so yeah, for, really good first impression. Um, and I honestly have not gotten into a like I, it's absolutely on my to do list. I have not gotten into the entire Norman, uh, <laughs> oh boy, Christopher Nolan, uh, full catalog yet. But yeah, it's like this was. The Prestige was I watched around the same time, and obviously you see a lot of the similarities with the uh, casting <laughs> uh, right off the bat uh, for mm. the Dark Knight. But yeah, this was like one of the, like this movie specifically was what really opened my eyes to like the magic of cinema. This was one of the first movies that really got me into movies. Um, so yeah, oh, this was just like a really nice. eye opening experience when I first watched this around eighth grade. Um, That's awesome. Yeah. So yeah, this was like. Yeah, I was like, I specifically just, I think there's so much good going on in this movie that just maybe fell in love with Nolan. Besides the fact that I already loved his Dark Knight trilogy. And mm, obviously, yeah, you got right. like Oppenheimer coming out this year. Um, so yeah, he's, yeah, he's, yeah. he's still got it. I am obligated to ask, because I know I don't shut up about it. Have you seen Memento yet? No. Oh, oh you are missing <laughs> out, my friend. You are missing yeah, out. Yeah, you've got, you've got some there's, homework there's to do. <laughs> Dude, that is my comfort film. No, I, I know I'm very behind on the full. Um... You'll get oh, wait, no, I have seen them. I, I, I always get um, <laughs> that, and uh, I haven't seen uh, Inception, but I've seen Memento. Okay. <gasps> I always get those two confused. <laughs> I honestly was not a... I was kind of... As far as my love for Christopher Nolan, I was a little underwhelmed with Memento. I feel like there's more holes in <gasps> like, the plot. I, one of the things I love about it, the prestige is how, like precise like the entire like i think this is like one of the greatest screenplays of all time i i, I mm. love the attention to detail and obviously like memento has got a lot of the same ideas of yeah. like revealing things as you go but i think it's a little it's slightly less tight mm. i'm 
I feel I feel like I just got shot in the heart right now. I am <laughs> devastated. <laughs> Look, man, I, I I can forgive Hal with Interstellar, but <laughs> ooh, don't don't get me started on Interstellar. Don't... Oh, you want to be on Interstellar? Oh too? no, hell yeah, yeah, brother! I find it funny how James liked Interstellar more than the three of us combined. Oh yeah, totally. That's just so funny to me. It, it, it's extremely hilarious. Yeah, I I, I like um, Memento more than Interstellar. Not that I don't like Interstellar, but I think it's got even more issues than Memento. And obviously, oh, yeah. like. Yeah. As like, I, I what is that? His first or yeah. like, was that his first film? Memento. Memento was his second film. Oh, it was his first film. Was I, that's following. A, for yeah, at that point, like, that's a really good film. Like, yeah, of gonna, course, of course. I gotta hold it back. It's yeah. too much. You know, I'll, I'll give it this though. For, Memento was his second film, so of course it kind of was a bit of his starting point. So I can kind of see if you do have mm-hmm. like flaws. Think there's flaws with it, which I totally understand. Yeah. And you know what? I was just joking. I was joking about what I said earlier. I don't think like I'm actually like gonna be <laughs> mad over an opinion. Gra- of course. Of course. Just know, yeah. like th- this film it means so much to me, and it's just it's a comfort film. It's a personal favorite. Yeah. It- it's just one of the it's just one of these starting films I got into Christopher Nolan. All- and if you know me about if I have I told you about the DVD or have you heard about the special edition DVD? Ooh, yeah, Ben. You, ha, have you heard of the Memento DVD? Because it's 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 no. It's re- oh, dude. <laughs> oh, dude. Okay. Well, uh, tune in for uh, James's No One Ranking. I will briefly talk about it. Yeah, and if you all need right, a more, right. and if you want a more in depth discussion, like listen to episode eight of Too Many Movies, where we go into real deep like detail That's on that play. DVD. There, yeah, there's a lot can, to talk I, about. Or I can that just DVD. tell you whenever. Yeah, or oh that. Oh my too. god, dude. It's, it's one. It's one of the key features why I love the film. It's just, it's yeah. just one of the best DVDs I've ever seen. Oh, it's so people cool. need to know about it. Yeah, exactly. It sounds like an opportunity to pad the runtime on this episode. Perhaps? Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> We're not here to discuss. Yeah, no, no. That, <laughs> that's a different four hours for a different glass of milk. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, quoted that from Conjun House. <laughs> well, Mordo, why don't you? Uh, kind of give your opening thoughts on the prestige because i'm actually curious because because uh, this was your first time watching it correct uh it was um so i i'm gonna be real with you so i i wanted to make a bit earlier how you said you had the 4k i'm like 4k man i just got the dvd of it yeah <laughs> yeah i saw like, the image you, you sent of it like i i, I love that's a pretty cool uh, cover art it, it is really cool i want to talk yeah. about it later when it's we so talk pretty. about the 4k um no yeah 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 but um yeah, I, I'm gonna be real. Uh, um, I've I've had this DVD ever since I left Virginia back um, last year during the summer because I I found a copy of it at Second and Charles and I figured oh I probably should buy this. I know I'm probably gonna be talking about the Prestige pretty soon. It's gonna be one of the most. It's gonna be one of the upcoming episodes. <laughs> even <laughs> though this was I I bought it like last year and here we yeah. are months later. Yeah. So I've just kind of so this thing's kind of just kind of been in my drawer for the, for the longest time now, and you know since finally we've gotten to this episode, I figured all right, might as well sit through it. And um, uh, all I knew about it was that um, for for some reason uh, Christian Bale's in this, and I, I know he has a starring role in the Batman, but I guess he just wanted to get another go. Yeah. <laughs> and a Nolan film. I believe this predates is, the. Uh... It, or is it the it, same? It might be a year after. Uh, it's it's Batman literally Begins. smack dab in the middle between Batman Begins and The Dark Knight because it's 2006. Yeah, it's, right. it's, yeah. it's so funny because I assumed this came first before Batman Begins, but no, it's the other way around. That's why yeah. it's so funny. Well, you want to know yeah. the other connection? Oh, so you got Michael has, Caine, too. Well, not just Michael Caine. Christian Bale in The Prestige plays a character named Alfred. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's, that's, like, so, that's so funny. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. Oh, also, so. yeah, David Bo. David Bowie's also in this. Also, can as, I just say how it's yeah, funny how Tesla. like oh, oh he's Tesla. I never yeah. noticed that. That's wild. Yeah, that's David his Bowie. Name's, his name's. I meant to look that Tesla. up. Yeah. That's uh, why. Well, Nikola Tesla's a real person, so he's a real historical yeah. figure, and so I, I know. But every time I. Every yes. time I, I hear the word Tesla, all I can think of is Elon Musk car. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. I will. Be, I am. I will admit, I am a bit ashamed that I figured he had a lot more screen time in this film, but no, not really. No. But it's it's fucking David Bowie. Like, how would you not give him much screen time? Like, I thought they would be. Yeah. There's not a ton of major characters. It's very focused on like your, that is that is true. Very focused on Al on uh, Christian Bale and Hugh Jackman. Well, yeah, 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 so... Yeah. No, um... 
Jackman. <laughs> Jackman. <laughs> so, you know what's funny? If yeah, I had a nickel for every time I watched a David Bowie film in the same month, I'd have two nickels, which <laughs> isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice, right? Yeah, that's right. Context that's right, because... The... Yeah, please give the context. Uh, context. Uh, Ravlin... Uh, if you know the film Ravlinth, Lab... I... Labyrinth. I feel like I can't pronounce shit right. Classic. Labyrinth. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's a Jim Henson dark fantasy film. I'm sure yeah. you're all are you aware of it. It, in <laughs> it recently got a re-release in theaters, and I heard my friend Sora saw it in theaters, and I'm like, fuck it, I should give this a shot. I have nothing else better to do. Yeah. <laughs> better than watching Kung Fu Panda 4. <laughs> I didn't hear it got re-released. I would have gotten to see it. Yeah. I, think I'm, I think I made a wise decision. I may have missed the first 20 minutes because I was late, but I had a nice time. Ah, that's good. I'm glad. I'm glad you liked Labyrinth. I mean, I don't like it as much as The Dark Crystal, but I'm glad. I'm. I'm always happy to see people watch it because I do like it. Um, no, yeah, I, I respect that. Dark, yeah, yeah, both that and Dark Crystals are both good dark fantasy yeah. gems. I wish there were more of like dark fantasy stuff from like Jim Henson, yeah. just more yeah. mature stuff than yeah. like you know the usual stuff like Fraggle Rock, Sesame Street, Muppets, all that sort of jazz. Just, like, yeah, the... be more mature. <sighs> Well, so it's funny. Well, I don't, I don't want to go too deep into this because this is so far from the prestige. But I just <laughs> want to mention that what there, like some people do consider a third movie after The Dark Crystal and Labyrinth as being like a dark Jim Henson movie, and it's called Mirror Mask, which was released I in two thousand five. That. Yeah, that's the one I always bring up. Yeah, because so we've talked about it on the podcast, and it's. I mean, I like Mirror Mask, but. It is freakier than anything in the Dark Crystal or Labyrinth. Like, it is a freaky yeah, I, freaking movie. I will say, like, it's definitely, like, a film I don't hear a lot of word about. It's mostly just no. Dark Crystal or Labyrinth. Yeah, yeah, those are the two big yeah. ones. Yeah, so I don't believe in the whole trilogy. Yeah, but can I talk about the domino effect of what led us to Prestige? So, yes, please. We all know we all know Christian Bale from, not from the Dark Knight trilogy, but American Psycho. Yes, that is one of the most iconic films that he's known for. And I know I like to joke about Patrick Bateman every time I watch a film with Christian Bale in it. But the thing with that, with that film, um, that in the end credits, the song they play is Something in the Air by David Bowie, if I'm correct. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Another film did that too. Memento. <laughs> <laughs> Memento That's right. had Something wow. in the Air by David Bowie. And we talked about that on the here, episode. This came out the same yeah. year, too, didn't they? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Wait. That. Oh, my God. That's insane. And here yeah. we are, years later, with The Prestige, a Nolan film with Christian Bale and David Bowie in it. Yeah, buddy. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a domino effect. What a domino infe- effect, indeed. So, well, I do want to give my thoughts. So... I'll be honest, I was a little worried with The Prestige because this was a movie that I think the first time I watched it would have been the same year I watched Interstellar, like back in 2020 when like, you know, 2020, I had a lot of time on my hands. So I watched a lot of movies that year. Um, And I was worried that this was going to be another Interstellar where I rewatch it. And I'm like, oh, this was not as good as I remembered it being. But it's me. <laughs> I can safely say, I can safely say the prestige lived, lived up to my expectations of rewatching it. I love this film. I think it's really, really good. Um, I don't know if I love it as much as you do swine. Um, Mm -hmm. I don't think this is my personal favorite Nolan film, but the things it does right. And it does really well. It just does so freaking well. Like I, I'm like, I'm like really impressed with all the good stuff it does. Um, one of the things I want to just jump right into with this movie is its two central characters, that being Hugh Jackman and uh, Christian Bale's characters. Like, I think the reason this movie works so well for me is because of those two. Like, I, just something about them. It, th- I mean, there's a lot to talk about with them, but I just want to say, like, that's one of my favorite aspects of this movie is the two of them. Just not just the journey that they both go on, but just like, you know, the performances, the costuming, the the just everything about them is so good. And why I probably like this as much as I do. I don't know. Do you guys agree? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're both do a fantastic. Yes. I, I, I love the screenplay so much. Um, they because, yeah, you're comparing like kind of and they get into it. What's that? <laughs> 
no, I was just, I was, you know, I was, I was, I was looking at Letterbox and I realized, how have I not followed you yet? <laughs> oh, you gotta get on that. Um, but yeah, they kind of get into it at the end of the film, but like how the, um, yeah, I got Al, um, yeah, Alfred. Uh, <laughs> that's gonna be confusing <laughs> to say. Um, yeah, like Alfred is like you know the um one who's like he's real like like magician. He he's just a really good at doing magic tricks. He's like illusion and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And like then you're comparing with Algier, who's like just a really good showman and like kind of is into it. Um, and yeah, that's how the um, and, you know, Algier wouldn't be into it. Like you have such strong character motivations for why they have this rivalry. I mean, yeah, you, you like set up fairly often that like something that wouldn't like not super integral to the plot. What kind of like sparks it is, you know, like you have the, uh, the rope and like, there's, there's just, there's so many layers of, that's what I love about this movie is like, it, it is inspired by the concept of the magic trick. Like the, the mm-hmm. mere concept of the movie is what centers it around. There's so many like reveals as you go on. Like you don't know, like, does he know, when he says that he doesn't know what the uh, and they don't even reveal like what the deal is with the knot like that's the one thing that's not entirely clear just because like there's so many things where he's saying like oh yeah part of me feels like this way and part of me feels this way and obviously like, it's alluding to the fact that you know he's got a um, he's cloned himself and um, so like, I don't know um, I guess that's possible that predates the cloning and that's why one of them has one memory and one of them has the other of what the knot is um that's a weird timing thing i i that's the one thing that's not super clear you know that's Um, that's a good point because like the way i interpreted it it was that um he knows exactly what not he did but he feels so guilty for maybe doing the original for doing that knot that he said he was going to do and it ended up killing her that he just like buries it away and that he just genuinely does not remember it but you're right. Yeah, and I think that's it, also it. Can, it could have my been initial the thought other. was that it, it yeah. It, I've I've usually gone with the fact that it's just like a traumatic experience and he isn't sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously, like you have the setup of like he's not like he kind of gets fumbles at the moment. Um, but the way it is set up is very much like the the writing is very similar to all the other times where they're like being uh like the sleight of hand of like. Oh, he's saying, like, oh, yeah, I forgot about this. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, I promised you. Um, I forgot about that. Yeah. Um, it is set up very similar. So that's where, like, is it a part of that theme of setting up, like, the illusion of two people? Or is it actually like, a legitimate, like, emotion? And, again, we don't really – he says he doesn't even get anything from Tesla. But at some point, he made the clone. So, yeah, you're not really – Well, because like, really that's, well, that's what I'm wondering because at the end, uh, Hugh Jackman – says like a brother a twin so like Mm -hmm. i interpreted that as like okay he never even cloned himself like it was it it would just so happen that these were like twin brothers they just look really really similar um Um, i i try to look into it and i can confirm i think that is the case they are twins he never yeah um Hmm. alfred never cloned himself because yeah i feel like because the way i interpret it is like these are like two brothers who are so committed to being like really good magicians that they just that they like bake that into their personality where they're just like no we're just one entity like we're so good at illusions and so good at being magicians that we're just going to make it seem like we are just one guy like that that that's how deep their commit their uh they're willing to commit to the bit essentially mm-hmm. you know yeah i i guess like the fact that they have a um I know they have the shared love for their daughter. I feel like they, mm-hmm. they, um, the court alludes to like the mysterious origin. Like, I guess if you, because it seems like, and yeah, it's complicated. Yeah, like, yeah. like, because Fallon's not a real person. Like, it's, it, there, there's never any suggestion that there was a, like, a separate identity one of them had at any mm-hmm. point. And maybe I guess that's part of like the uh, whole illusion. But yeah, I guess I was under the impression that, at some point, he did get like um, Tesla did offer like a cloning op- like like a cloning solution. Um, I mean, maybe yeah, what it is, what it is is that they are like truly inseparable, like twin brothers. But then one of mm-hmm. them does genuinely fall for uh, Rebecca Hall's character, Sarah. 
And yeah. so that and that's why there's that whole like thing where she's like, I can't some days you're in love with me and some days you're not. Like he genuinely mm-hmm. does love Rebecca Hall, and then the other one genuinely yeah. loves Olivia Scarlett Johansson's character. Mm-hmm. And I think that's um And that's what ultimately th- ends up, you know, kind of tearing down their illusion, so to speak, you right. know. At least with them, yeah. Yeah. Um and I is the other thing is cuz they also got the direct comparison with um you know Algier and uh he's got the uh the actor that and um that's so true. Christian Bale's I'm instantly able to um like kind of tear apart that cuz he sees where the uh, like the uh gaps and like he's not committed to the bit. Right. Um like well, that, he doesn't have that the that, vision the focus on the obsession of making the magic. I think that's yeah. Well, I guess it could be a brother, but or I guess like an identical twin. Um, well, you I, see, I mean, yeah, like both are played by Christian yeah. Bale. Yeah, both um, are played by Christian Bale. Yeah, I think that's just a even that I think is like comparing that so strongly to the fact that you have Christian Bale cloned himself and like you have two of the same mind with the same focus is like how tight it has to be. Like even a brother couldn't pull that off. Right. It's kind of my impression. Yeah, I guess, I guess, again, I feel like that's one of those things that it's never truly, like, brought up. So, like, I guess that's what makes it kind of interpretable. And I appreciate that it's interpretable that way. Like, mm-hmm. this movie knows what to give answers to and what to leave as interpretable. Um, mm-hmm. You'd mentioned the word obsession, and I think that's another, like, real deep theme with this movie is yeah. the idea of obsession. Because both characters... Um, kind of start off on like kind of, kind of like different view viewpoints on obsession. Mm -hmm. You know, at the beginning, Christian Bale's character is very much like obsessed with like wanting to be seen as like this amazing magician. be seen as like this really uh, like beloved guy, this like really smart and beloved magician. And then Hugh Jackman is just, you know, he's, he just wants to be with his wife. And then as the, he wants to be with like his wife or like a family member. Whereas like, as the movie Mm -hmm. progresses, they kind of shift focuses. Whereas Hugh Jackman becomes far more obsessed with being like the smarter and better magician. And Christian Bale becomes more interested in just wanting to be with his daughter, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I just, I think that kind of motive. Yeah. I just love, uh... I love that shift. I love that. Yeah. How like, and it feels natural that the seeing the two of them shift because the the thing I really like about this movie is that there's not a real protagonist or antagonist. Like I guess you do focus a lot more on Hugh Jackman throughout the movie, but by the end it's Christian Bale who ends up getting the happy ending, you know? Mm-hmm. Um but it's not so much right. as like it's not so much like a protagonist antagonist cuz there's no real villain of the movie, I guess is what I'm trying to get at, you know? Yeah. Sorry, sorry yeah, what were you going to say? They, like... oh, yeah, go ahead. I think like what I what I thought as when I was watching this film is that this film does a really good job to make you feel like I don't know who I'm supposed to be rooting for mm. sort of thing. Yeah. Like they're mm-hmm. both like they're both fucked in their own way. Yes. Like there is no winning side here. It's just all just out of spite for each other. And yeah, right. you, you can't really yeah. tell, like, which one... You, you can't tell, like, who you want to win or who wants the... Who you want fall. It's either just wondering... How did do, how does this all end? Yeah. And it's just... And it's just, it's just a good job just to show how, like... Like, no one's the good guy or the bad guy here. Mm-hmm. In a way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I like, think what's... It, it's really good because, it, like, it's internally motivated. You obviously have, like... Yeah, Algiers like, um, like wants revenge because he thinks uh, he blames Christian Bale for his wife's death, mm-hmm. and obviously Bale's motivation is basically that he doesn't, he has such a high respect for the art, and he has no respect for, he doesn't have respect for Algiers because he thinks he's a hack of a magician, like mm-hmm. he doesn't tr- respect. Basically, it comes a lot most of it just comes out of respect, and then obviously you want he wants revenge for like losing his fingers too, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> and yeah, so it's like that, um. And then Jackman gets infuriated because he's like Bale has the life that he wanted. Like he's mad that Bale got to have like eat it, kind of eat his cake and uh, have his cake and eat it too is what um, Algiers sees. And that's where they have the 
the fact that it is internally motivated and you have like your revenge against each other, but also at the root of the fact that they just have no respect for each other too. Right. And yeah, and I, but I, even though I feel like, yeah, both of these two characters are incredibly fucked up in some ways because they do like incredibly like they, they do incredibly like malicious shit throughout the movie for sure. Mm-hmm. But by the end, I don't feel, I do feel bad bad for hugh jackman's character because it's like oh like i saw him fall as a character and i am also like happy to see christian bale get a happy ending even though he did he is essentially responsible for the death of a woman he does some really malicious malicious shit over the course of the movie and again he was so committed to this weird bit where like he was two people the whole time like that i don't understand like i could never commit that hard but I'm still, mm-hmm. but that I think that's a testament to how strong these characters are. That they can do this horrible shit, but I'm still fascinated, semi rooting for them. I'm still happy when they like achieve their dream, and I feel bad when they don't. You you know what I'm saying? Like there's this, it's a very unique. It, they're very unique characters to follow along. That I don't think you. I don't feel like you get a lot of that in a lot of movies. Like these like really morally gray characters throughout the whole runtime and you're still left like feeling for them you know yeah and no one does such a good job focusing in on like the the uh compare like yeah the contrasting of basically the two like you have like you know part of like one one of the ways which um bale's um scheme works is that you know they take turns being the prestige they take turns taking in the uh the applause and Mm. um algier has to deal with um like he has to sit at the bottom of the stage. It has to get eaten away. Like every, he's never going to get the accolades himself, and that's what, like all everything builds up. So and obviously you get to the end, and like again, that's like a, another character motivation is like now he can. Great, he doesn't know if he's going to end up in the tank or at the uh, top of the stage, but like the one that survives is always going to get that accolades. He gets the he have his cake and eat it too. Again, yeah, he, uh, gets to um, be on the stage before and after uh, well, for the uh, transported man. Well, one of my favorite parts of the movie like one of my favorite uh lines is definitely at the very end when like hugh jackman is like talking to christian bale and he's like been shot and he's like telling him he's just like you want to know how much i've sacrificed like look around you and christian bale goes i don't care and it's like yeah. that, that's such a good character moment to show how much he's progressed since the beginning of the movie where he's like you know what i don't want to know your secrets i don't want to know how you did this like i'm not interested anymore i just want to be with my daughter mm-hmm I, I I guess I kind of, I guess I kind of took that as like he already knows that too. Um, like that, he kind of already pieced too. it together, and like I don't have any respect for what you're doing. Right. Um, yeah. Like that that could be it too. That he he already knows and he doesn't care. Like that. I think. Yeah. Like that's uh, it's so cold hearted that like yeah. and also like yeah. Are you really sacrifice? Like like it's there's so little to know. Like what's yeah they have so little knowledge of like how exactly this works that right like. Yeah, you're not. You're never the one who's actually in the tank. Is the reality like you're, you're the one who's up at the, up at the top of the stage for the prestige. Right. And exactly, and like we said about sacrifice, like yes, his wife dies, but like at some point in the movie when he gets like the journal and like Olivia like talks to him is just like this won't bring your wife back. And uh, Hugh Jackman explicitly says like I don't care about my wife. And it's mm-hmm. like whoa, dude, whoa, <laughs> it's like whoa. <laughs> Yeah, when um, I heard that, I'm like, ooh, that that was yeah. a poor choice of words there, man. Yeah. But again, yeah, it kind of like Olivia is another good, um, like, vessel of that. Like, she gets to experience that with both of them. Obviously, it's not the full story with Christian Bale. Like, she only gets, like, she only gets half the man, so she only gets to, like, understand. She only gets to hear the one who yeah. loves her and not, like, like, yeah, she only gets half of it. Yeah, she gets to see, like, oh, yeah, neither of you, like, both of you seem to lack compassion for your past wives. Like you clearly aren't invested in this. Yeah. But the other half is invested. So, right. yeah. Oh, it's just, and that's, that's the, uh, the tragedy of it. Yeah. Uh, it's tragedy. Uh, it's just, what, what a fascinating film. Like, how do you come up with this? You know, like that, like I'm just yeah. watching it. I'm like, this is incredible. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. And it is, it is adapted. I know there's a book. I don't, yeah. I haven't gotten to read it. No, yeah. I haven't read it. I, I, I found out recently I found out recently that like oh this was a not this was a film adaptation of a novel I'm like oh that's that's a first yeah yeah 
But I mean, it, it's still, even though it's like an adapted source, it still feels like Nolan is, it still feels like a Nolan movie. Like he has mm-hmm. his like signature style on it. Like, you know, Oppenheimer is based off of a novel, but like that still feels like a Nolan film. That was based on real events. Yeah. Well, it is based on real events, but it's it's it. But like the specifics are based off of the novel. Uh, there's like a like a biography on Oppenheimer. And, but and then another example would be you know Batman. Like Batman is not a Nolan is not a Nolan made source material. Like that is very much the source material of somebody else. But Nolan was still able to make it his own. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, no, this is this is another example of that. Nolan is able to take somebody else's work and still make it his own in some way. And I I remember you'd said earlier, uh, Swine, how like this is like a movie that like really where you like fell in love with like cinema, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so el- elaborate a little on that. Yeah, um, I think it's the because um, yeah, it's uh. I saw like a magic tricks about illusion. And I think that's what really this movie delves so, like commits so hard to the illusion and like, like the little, like it, it's a master class of foreshadowing. And mm-hmm. like, there are so many, like it, you take it as a throwaway line and everything like kind of builds up to something. Like everything kind of combines into something like, or I mean, yeah, you get to the, the end piece and you kind of get to see like why, uh, like specifically with um, Christian Bale, like why he acts the way he does, like that's a uh, like you have like yeah, like there's the two big reveals would be the there are Alfred is two people and mm-hmm. then uh, that um, Angier's disappearing man he kills himself after every time would be like the two big reveals. Um, but yeah, just how like he's a- like no one is able to perfectly like he has such a firm grasp of like the story he's able to tell that yes. he's able to like everything like he has he, he shifts around in periods of time kind of like uh, oppenheimer but he's able to like just drop things in like in order it makes sense and in a way that you're not everything makes sense in post and it is uh, everything builds up so well, but yeah, you're not really getting a, and obviously, like the later you get into the film, the more you're starting to piece together. It's, it's a very smooth, um, progression of that. But again, you still don't realize what's going on to the last moment. Like that is such a good, re- the, there are big reveals or like pay off so well. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's just the way that he's able to hide things in the way he's telling the story, the way he like, uh, angles the camera and it, it has how well it rolls together with the concept of a magic trick. The concept of illusion is such a strong motivator in how he creates this film. It just goes, it, it flows together so naturally. I love it. I agree. Yeah, no, I, that is something I realized while watching it this time. I'm just like, cause you know, we mentioned that like it's based off of a book, but like, I don't know. I feel like this kind of story works better in something like film because you need that visual aspect for sure mm-hmm. and uh, like i was watching it i'm just like this has some really sharp editing and i feel like you know you can only really achieve this kind of storytelling with the edited film yeah yeah i'd be curious to see how like the book handles it yeah um i might buy I mean, it yeah like you can have like a time at barnes and noble they might yeah. be at barnes and noble I really want to buy house and honestly, like every adapted yeah. screenplay can be a like it can be adapted, but the reality is like yeah, a director, the uh, screenwriter can take a lot of liberties with how much is actually like directly inspired from it, like yeah. rather than just taking the general concept and rolling with it. Yeah, of so course. yeah, it can kind of, kind of vary. Yeah, of course. But yeah, it's like everything like you have like the the running theme of like Andrew getting his hands dirty, and you like it peaks so hard, like they're. Like you're revealing, oh yeah, he's getting his hands there. Oh, he's actually like killing himself on every performance. Like the like that, it, it peaks so hard on like it, it draw drives kind of like all these themes to eleven. Yeah, because it, it does get re- it's a really intense film. Uh, well, does he really get his hands dirty? Is it murder or is it suicide? That, that's that's getting <laughs> okay. It's like yeah, it's like you gotta like. It's the same way that you got to kill a dove for the, uh, like, it's set up so, again, with the, you got the dove in the cage where it dies right. in the cage. Like, that's something they set up in the beginning of the movie. Now he's, like, doing with a human life. Like, right. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's like, funny that you mentioned I, I think that it's, because... you're getting your hands dirty regardless. Sure. 
it's it's funny that you 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 mentioned that because I saw like this one comment that I really want to just mention is just love how despite everything they've done, everything they've been through, all that they've learned in the end, they're still doing the bird trick. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point though. The whole like yeah, the the I love how like uh yeah at the beginning he's just like he like kills the bird in the cage the kid notices and he's just like oh see the bird's okay he's like but what about his brother it's just like ah, yeah. it's the same bird and then you see it later on he has like the smushed cage with like the dead bird in there it's like oh there yeah. were two birds uh oh foreshadowing yeah and um and yeah like even stuff like where you have like um alfred digging in on like the the actor um which that's a that's a fun bit when um alfred uh like when he sabotages the bit and then he shows yeah. up the other end it's played he, pretty well for he, as much as he's not a very good showman they really they really uh dig into like him being a bad showman <laughs> But, Except for that scene is a lot of fun. Well, no, but, that uh, just shows that he's gotten better as a showman. Like the fact that he yeah. hijacks uh, Robert's, uh, he, he mm-hmm. hijacks his whole thing. And it's just like, oh, yeah. why don't you come across the street to my to my playhouse? It's just like, ah. Yeah. <laughs> um, where was I going with that? Uh, yeah, I lost, I lost my train of thought. No, that's fine. Mordo, do you have anything you want to bring up with the movie? Yeah, because Ben Hughes just been yapping. This whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. Have this you... is one of my like. This is easily one of my top five favorite movies. Have you seen his no, episode no, lengths? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't blame you. I, I just want. Oh, yeah. I just want to make sure that like you, you get your turn to talk about it, and I get my turn. Yeah, but no, yeah. Um, I, I think the best way I can just say it is just how I described it in my letterbox review, and just just what the fuck (laughs) no seriously what the absolute fuck yeah (laughs) it it is well here's the thing is like when i first watched this movie i'll admit i kind of did know the little twist going in the but the only twist i knew is that there were two christian males but that was it i didn't know anything else so i was still blown away by the majority of it because i'm like oh i didn't know that that happened i didn't know that that happened and then by the time it got to the reveal that there were two christian males i'm like oh now it makes sense it's like and i was still like Mm. like even on this rewatch it's like all right i know it's where it's going but i was still blown away by everything you know i think i I remember like this whole this whole time i'm just taking them like what am i gonna write for my letter off to you i'm just gonna write the most goofy uh, goofiest shit ever and then the ending happens yeah, there's. A... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, again, I love the. Uh, again, one other thing I love about the. Um, yeah, what I mean, love the cinema is just. Yeah, the, the attention to detail. You have stuff like the. Um, and this is one of the ones that he actually, like, comes back to, like, later in the film for one of the reveals, like, when they have, like, him having to like um bludgeon his fingers off like that's in- that's an intense scene like to yeah. get them to match like after the bullet yeah. um and then you obviously like yeah like his wife is like why well, i don't understand why i was bleeding again like this yeah um and then like i also and then that connects with uh olivia like i like part where their relationship with um the second alfred um how their relation kind of like starts off is like he the fact that she's appreciating his commitment to the bit of like having his fingers and like how difficult that makes it like obviously like my at least my impression is that he was not the one who got his fingers shot off shot right. off and he doesn't the fact that someone uh, appreciates it and it's not like like they they do have this obsession but there is like that still that human need does exist there it's not as dramatic as algiers like desire for the appreciation the crowd for the showmanship, but he still does have that like desire for the personal appreciation that he doesn't feel like he gets from uh, um, their actual wife. Right. I think that's a very that's a very good um, actor because you can just see it in Christian Bale's face when it happens. Like it's not like an ex- real expression, but that was a really good act, well acted scene. Yeah, Mordo, anything to add? Oh yeah, I, I definitely wanted to like continue talking, but um. But no, yeah, just, just, I was just speechless with that review. It's just like, I, like, I, <laughs> this movie scares me. <laughs> this movie terrifies me <laughs> in the most brilliant way possible. Just valid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh god, that that ending just really just fucked me over ever after everything I've just witnessed. Like I I, I was just I, I just it started off just in myself. All right. Okay, it's just it's just a simple story about magicians. It's a rivalry going on. I don't know how Nolan this is gonna be all that. And then as it goes on, I'm realizing, oh, what the flying fuck is going on? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, it, it's just it's just interesting. It's like uh, so, the one thing I like I still can't think about, of course, is the ending and the fact that you know, when it came to um Hugh Jackman's character. This whole time, he was use he, he this machine that we assumed was doing tell that like can teleport people that David that uh, Tesla David Bowie's character made. Um, I'm starting to understand why he said destroy the machine, don't even use it, mm. and yet he doesn't listen to it and uses it and realizing, oh um, fuck, that's a cloning machine. And honestly, yeah. I I will admit though, I feel like if that was actually the case in here, I feel like that that trope would have been kind of a bit ridiculous and kind of unrealistic. But I feel like now, after like explaining it in that ending, I can't help but like appreciate that is actually like the the concept they went with that, and the fact that um this whole time like there has been duplicates of Hugh Jackman's character and how he, and you can tell how like he's been telling everyone, especially with um, Michael Caine's character. He's like, um, don't, I don't want you to get closer or don't like, don't get yourself too far into what I'm doing because I don't think he wanted mm -hmm. anyone to know about th this is a cloning machine. Yeah. And it, it's just, it's just interesting just to look back on the scenes and just realizing, Oh yeah, this is what they meant by it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I almost and I and kind of the crazy part with uh, with that was that um and I always think it's because this is another thing that's not fully explained but you know you have where he um when Christian Bale actually goes down underneath the stage and like finds him like um Algier doesn't appear at the top so like at I don't know if he saw Bale go behind or noticed him to because I it, it seems very clear that this was all like a setup to get um bail to fall for like i think this was like his plan the whole time to frame him for this mm. um but yeah i think that's just a uh, another um yeah i think that's another interesting detail is like how like i forgot my train of thought but yeah i think that's uh i don't know i was going somewhere with that <laughs> no but you're also, right it is like an interesting detail yeah. And the fact that I mean, I because I had to I had did some digging earlier just to be like, okay, was Bale's was twin a clone? It turns out it was. It they were. I, I think they are twin brothers. And the fact that he let his brother die in his price, that's kind of fucked. Yeah, <laughs> that yeah. is really fucked. It is. Okay, well, who's the real one? <laughs> yeah, like, so yeah, like, which one is the real one though? Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. I mean, I kind of interpreted it as like you know the quote-unquote original bail like the one we're always familiar with that we're familiar with as actually being alfred is the one who ends up like surviving and the other one doesn't but i mean mm -hmm. again i feel like the movie doesn't explicitly say like it does it vague enough that you could probably interpret it some other way you know yeah that's fair I mean, the the movie's tagline is, are you watching closely? And yeah. to, be, to be quite honest, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mal. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah again, that just, like, again, plays well into, like, the... Uh, obviously, it makes sense in the plot of the film. Like, yeah, they are magicians, and he, like... He... Because, yeah, um, Bale's character thrives on, like, being able to have, like, a entirely convincing illusion. Mm -hmm. uh, but, yeah, like, from, like... Christopher Nolan's directing style. That's all again, like how he plays. I like that. And this is like comparing this to like something like, um, like the sixth sense. Um, mm. like, again, like people like, ups, like get really excited about, um, M night Shyamalan, like is famous for doing this kind of stuff, but I don't even think his is like as tight as what Nolan would be able to pull. You know, what's here. funny. What like this, this felt so like a, this felt like a Shyamalan film in a way. Hmm. Like it's it's heavy on the twists, yeah. Yeah, well, it was like that's heavy on that's the another twists, thing. That feels and that feels like a twist. I feel like Shyamalan would do. Yeah, well, that's the thing I was talking about in my review was that you know a while back I watched the movie uh, Argyle that came out this year, <laughs> and oh God, yeah, that... you and ZP love that movie. 
Yeah, yeah, me and ZP. It's mine and ZP's favorite film of this year, of course. Um, Hell yeah. And that's a movie that has, like, a ton of, like, twist after twist. Like, kind of similar to The Prestige, where, like, the whole last few minutes are just like, oh, this reveal, this reveal, this reveal, this reveal. Um, But controversial opinion i think the prestige does it better than argyle oh yeah uh, of course because argyle wasn't mm. really that good was it no it was not good it was it was it well, was boring it was bland exactly but, but yeah no but i feel like it was bland and not it didn't succeed in the same way as uh the prestige in the same way that like the worst Shyamalan movies kind of uh fail like i think you're right i feel like even though Shyamalan is seen as like the twist guy i feel like a lot of his twists are extraordinarily weak like i feel like the sixth yeah. sense I, I can't judge the sixth sense because i've only seen it once and it was years ago i have not seen it since i can say full full-heartedly though that like unbreakable's twist is really good and i stand by that mm-hmm. being a really good twist but just because and it's also a really good movie but in terms of his other twists throughout the years, they do kind of, you know, vary in quality from like uh, signs twist being, oh, the water uh, d- destroys the aliens and then <laughs> happenings twist of it was the trees the whole time. you know. <laughs> oh um, so well, because here, here's the thing. I feel like what makes those twists far more weaker than the ones in the prestige is because it feels like and and also with argyle the reason those twists don't work is it feels like the movie wrote the twist first and then wrote the Mm -hmm. movie around that twist whereas i feel like this movie you know i feel like nolan really put a lot more focus into these characters and their journeys along the way so the twist feels more earned like i feel like again those other movies they're more focused on shocking you whereas i feel like here it is focused on shocking you because you know it's a movie about magicians it's about the the prestige mm-hmm. the, the 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 scale and scope of a magic trick uh the yeah. grandiose nature that comes with that but it is still also focused on telling a great story with very interesting characters yeah i think what's also really clever about it is that it is like it is very focused on like showing pulling back the curtain like because mm. it is showing you like how they do their tricks like it doesn't feel like it's hiding anything from you outside of like they do focus on like and they go into more and more like the movie progresses like we really don't know anything about fallon like mm-hmm. it's like like it it's not like he's he's not trying to hide anything from you outside of like there is like the one very like it's clear that um christian bale has some secrets and like we get to see like it, the camera does kind of shift over to like algiers perspective is like there's things that he doesn't know and we don't know either. Like that we're, we're kind of learning together, Mm -hmm. but yeah, it's not like it's hiding anything from us. Like, it's just like, so unassuming because we have like, yeah. Yeah. Yes. They assume that Fallon is, um, Bale, uh, Christian Bale's version of, uh, of, um, root. I'm getting his name of root. You said, was it root of, uh, I think, I think it was root. Like the drunk Hugh Jackman character. Yeah. Oh, uh, no, I just said, like, no, no, I, I was saying, like, we assume that Fallon is, um, Fallon is Christian Bale's version of Michael Caine. Oh, like, like yeah. Uh, like, the... like, of John Cutter. Like, he's just, like, oh, he's just, like, performing that same role. Okay. Like, the we, the, the like, assistant, yeah, yeah, yeah. the assistant yeah. character. Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. just assume that, like, mean. yeah, we'll learn about him later. Like, we're, right. we're like, we'll either... We either don't need to know about him or we'll learn about him later. And then the longer it goes and we still don't know anything about him. Like he does like naturally progress that tension, progress that tension of like characters. That's like, who the hell is this guy? We don't know yeah. who he is either. What's the deal? Like, Again, though, we don't feel like we need to know anything. Like we feel right. like, oh, yeah, they, yeah maybe they tell us. Yeah, us we'll more. eventually it's learn. It's hidden intentionally. But again, even rewatching it every time Fallon was on screen, because I know it's Christian Bale and uh, like we're actually paying attention to him. It's like, OK, that's obviously Christian Bale. But I'm still. I still don't feel like the story is taken away. Like the the tension of that is still not taken away, even though I know the reveal coming up. And I feel like, mm-hmm. you know, that's yeah. that's a hard thing to pull off with a movie with a twist. Is like, okay, you're now watching it in a completely different perspective because you know where it's going, but you're still captivated. You know, like that's that. I feel like is really something 
like that's the best mystery movies that have like a mystery aspect to it are that where like you know what's going to happen but you're still captivated and engaged in the story yeah yeah yeah. there's no there's not like any holes to like take you out of it either like Mm -hmm. it's a very tightly written it's very tightly written yeah yeah everything comes back into play can we also talk about like the engineer the engineering that went with some doing some of these uh tricks because i think those are like really cool like to talk about that yeah yeah i agree there was some like yeah like you know because like sometimes some people would argue like oh when you know how the trick is done like it kind of takes away the magic but i disagree like it i mean it depends on the trick of course yeah. but i mean it's the same thing with like i mean special effects in movies like when you're just like oh how did they do that special effect and then you see these behind the scenes and you're just like oh that's how they did it that was kind of what was happening in this movie like every time they showed mm-hmm. a trick and they're just like oh we're gonna do it this way this way and then you like see it in motion you're just like oh it's still cool to see because you're seeing all the effort that's put into making the trick work. Exactly. Yeah. When a when a director does have like that knowledge of like invest the time to learn the craft and like like you feel like you're hearing from an expert is like you get to learn something. You know, that's that's part of the fun of it. You get to like see it like done professionally. Yeah. I think especially especially with um Hugh Jackson's first attempt doing the transportation man, how like like he opens the door wide enough, he falls into the trap door. The other, like the lever, like the thing, like the thing, the lifts uh, the other guy into the the other door on the other side. And I thought, like, oh, that was a really cool how they pulled that off. <laughs> and I, I just love how like um, root was it the, the drunk guy? <laughs> he's just he's just ador- he's just adoring that moment, he's just kissing uh, his wife. <laughs> like and it's just yeah. dudes, dudes killing it out there. <laughs> Yeah, or he comes out that one time and he's just and he's just like womp womp. He like does the shrug. <laughs> womp, womp. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. I got, well, I, well, I, I got a little caught yeah, up in Christian, traffic when yeah. Christian Bale was kind of like convincing him, being like, "Don't work for the guy." Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and definitely the, that was really and definitely cool the scene, part too. where he uh yeah. the um that the 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 thing that like um braces landing wasn't there, like <laughs> that was Ooh. brutal. Oh, that was so brutal because then he falls and you can hear him like scream out in terror. And I'm just like, oh, that yeah. looked like it hurt. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He walks around the cane about, for the rest or, of the and movie. Definitely, too. When, That's true um, too. definitely when um, the. Um, oh, when Christian Bale showed up for the uh, bird trick and kind of sabotaged it. God, that was that was yeah. brutal as well. Like, you can hear the girl screaming and everything. Yeah, because yeah. like because the random lady's fingers get caught and she's just like <laughs> and she's like. Yeah. And it's God, like ah. I didn't replay that being like, Jesus Christ. I, I, I was going to make I, like I, I said, to make a joke saying like oh this is Britain psycho <laughs> <laughs> this is it American is. psycho origins this is one of yeah. uh, Patrick Bateman's yeah. ancestors <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> my great great grandfather back in London was quite the British psycho <laughs> <laughs> the British psycho <laughs> the British this psycho. is what American psycho oh, two should have been. Ooh, good point. Good point. I I would have watched British, British American Psycho two, British Psycho. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I had like a bunch of like idea jokes for like my letterbox review until I just yeah. realized, no, I'm sorry, I have to be speechless with this one. No, because yeah, it, hmm. it 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 is a very it, it 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 makes sense when you actually watch the movie. You're just like, what the fuck? Like, yeah, no, I agree. Um, I, I just I just think back on James's perfect blue review. How that's just what the actual fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I think this was my perfect blue moment. Mm. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I agree because you were saying like the ending kind of horrified you, and I agree because like it, the it, whole the, movie, this movie this is a horror film. This is yeah. a horror film. <laughs> I guess this would be one of the closest. This would be one of the closest times uh, Nolan has made a horror film. This and you know, debatably Oppenheimer. Um, y- hmm. Yeah, because you i agree like the visual of seeing like these like you know thousands of, hundreds of tanks of just like dead hugh jackman's in there it's like oh it's like it is something out of like a <laughs> oh, out of like a creepy pasta or something can i can i say something that's like really dumb that i thought of every time when, when i watched this film when i was watching please, that ending please. for some reason i just kept hearing hollow zep ringing in my ears just as uh as they're just talking to each other my brain's just thinking da na na da na 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 
I want this movie edited like a soul film right now. Ooh, I'm sure that exists, but I agree that that would go really hard. (laughs) I mean, I mean, that is essentially what it is, though. Yeah, it's it's a horrifying reveal. You're just like, oh, it it is like it gives you like like a little bit of the goosebumps. You're just like, oh, it's like spine chilling. Yeah, it does do a really good job of like grabbing your attention. Like it is very quick move. Like, you mentioned the editing. Like yeah, like yeah. the intense moments are very intense. I lo- I'm, it, it's it's, I like it, it's kind of is. I think it's relatively simple too. Like I, one of the mm. things I really like about it is just like the um you know when he does get hanged, like he just says abracadabra, and it's like not something that says it makes sense, but he never says it at any other point. Oh like, god, dude, it's a lot. Like mm. usually it's like it's not it's not Where? it's just it's so simple. It's simple magic terms. Like usually they'll say like, "Are you watching closely?" He, yeah, he switches it up and what he a, says abracadabra just for, like that's his magic trick. Is that he's what still a raw alive. line to go out on. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that is the that is the the rawest I've ever seen someone say the term abracadabra. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Huge credit to him. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's like it's snap, snap. Yeah, and then uh, Algier gets shot. Like it's it's again. That's like it's again. It's a really good and climax. I, I, really good reveal. It's, it's a really intense moment. It's really well edited. Yeah, I think like I think it would be very poetic knowing that both of them die at that exact moment if it wasn't for the fact that oh yeah there's a there's a second christian bale yeah yeah like yeah. both well, and yeah you got the red ball the, the red ball the is, is also on. good yeah and again to go back to like the, the editing like the 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 whole like the red ball bounced and bounces and then like it like pan the camera pans and you see like the bending down and then you see like the reveal of like the the missing two fingers like i feel like you can only uh really do that kind of shot justice in the art of film like that's why i like yeah i was really thinking about this film um just because you, you can really only achieve that in film like i don't think you could ever achieve like the reveal of that uh in the written word or like in any other yeah medium. No, honestly it, it's it take you can't get that like intense immediate payoff in writing it takes too long right it's the reality of it yeah, yeah exactly uh, uh, you know, speaking of like, uh, like hanging earlier, uh, I for some reason when I saw that when I saw like the argument happening with like him and Sarah, I just thought to myself, oh, where's she going? Oh, is she gonna like work for uh Hugh Jackman? Now? Oh, fuck, yeah, she's oh. she killed herself. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, oh, that's true. <gasps> okay, Sarah kills herself, and then so she dies by hanging, and so does uh, one of the Alfreds dies by hanging. Mm-hmm. Jesus. Yeah real poetic i think what's you know you know what's interesting what i found out if i am correct i think the original hugh jackman drowned and that was just a copy that he shot when i looked up on wikipedia i'm trying to think because fact... like because because like i feel like you could make the argument that like they're both the original and both the copies because like that's you know one of those things when it comes to like clones it's just like who's the original True. who's not it's like does that matter because they, because they're mm. they're both they're both gonna think they're the original. I kind of just skimmed through Wikipedia at some points. The really just being like, "All right, what's happening right now?" Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. yeah well, you can at least identify. I believe that um. Uh, the one that hangs was the one who loved Olivia because like he is apologizing for um what happened to Rachel. Yeah. Like as they're or they Sarah. separates with Fallon. Yeah. Or sorry, yeah. You, you said Rachel. You were probably Dark Knight brained in the moment. <laughs> 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 and then and then the fact that like we end on that shot with like the the drowned copies uh, like the drowned bodies of yeah hugh jackman's character like once that ends and then next thing i know i am suddenly like i'm just thinking to myself no and i'm just thinking to myself as the credits roll i'm just like no you cannot just end a movie like that and leave me traumatized and then just start playing radiohead on me <laughs> <laughs> you cannot just do that to me right now, Nolan. Yeah, no, it was that was quite an interesting like ending song, like credit song. I did not think they were gonna go with like. I guess this was early Nolan, so he was gonna go with Radiohead because like I was expecting like you know like the movie score to play over the credits, but it's like nope, Radiohead. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh okay. It was it was a little weird because this was a period piece. No, wait. And then it's just like yeah. Radiohead. It's like, well, wait a minute. <laughs> but no, hey. yeah, that's right. I remember like reading a review being like, sudden uh, Radiohead jump scare out of the blue. Okay. I remember yeah. reading that. I completely forgot about it. And I'm just like, is that, is that Tom York? 
Oh fuck, it is. Yeah. So I mean, it really uh, works. T- Tesla it's accidentally spawned it out of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> I think uh, just special, that's just to specify it. The song is called "Analyze," and it's just by Tom York. It's not a Radiohead song. It was just a, uh, a solo out, al- a solo track he did for his solo album, "The Eraser." Okay. Yeah. It sh- shows how much of a Radiohead fan I am. <laughs> Yeah, I, I know, like, if I remember, I remember there was meant to be a Radiohead song for Memento. I think it was, what, Paranoid Android or something like that? I think but we talked about that, this, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but they didn't go through with that. Uh, I know Tree Fingers was used. It was, like, an instrumental track on, like, the film soundtrack on the CD right. or somewhere. And then here we yeah. are now, <laughs> analyzed by Tom York on the procedure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we finally got that Radiohead slash Tom York song in a Nolan film. Let's go. Let's go. So, um, so I don't really have that much else to say about this movie other than, you know, talking about the 4K. So if you guys have anything else to talk about, please continue to talk uh, about If I could level one single criticism that does kind of take me out of it a slight bit is the, um, the, uh, the cat acting and oh. the, uh, the stock cat meow sound effect. I'm like, glad you were the one like, who They are so out. stock. Yeah. cat sound effects <laughs> they lay into it so much too they use all of them they use all of them scene. they use they use them they use one twice like you know the one yeah. you know the one twice it's, yeah yeah no it was so obvious and as i was watching the movie i'm just like oh yeah it was the one thing that also took me out i'm just like oh <laughs> You couldn't just no, it's not a big deal, but it's right. just so frustrating. Yeah, it's I just think it's a, like a perfect effect. film otherwise. But you know, <laughs> because I watch a lot of movies and because I am an editor, you know, by trade, so like I do come mm. across a lot of the same sound effects and I do recognize and because I watch a lot of movies, I come across a lot of the same sound effects. And it's just, it just makes mm. me wonder, it's like, could you not have just re recorded a cat? Like, is it that hard to just I, I, find I, I, a different it's cat? It's kind of hard to like generate that like, yeah, moment. Yeah. Like obviously, yeah, the cats aren't like some cats are talkative. Some I guess you could just like yeah, show up in an animal yeah. shelter. Probably. I, I would rather Christopher <laughs> Nolan actually go to like the sound guys and just re- record himself like meowing like a cat, just being like meow. <laughs> cat voice actor. Yeah. <laughs> <Nolan. laughs> but yeah, just how the um, and it's like, also. Not as bad, but yeah, the cat, when they are like cloning the cat, it's, it keeps cutting between it's sitting there and then it's up on its legs and then it's yeah. like hissing. Yeah. It's, it's kind of, that's a little, and it, it's a cat. Like, it's it's not, a cat. <laughs> it's kind of, the camera you... isn't always entirely focused on it, so it's not the most consistent, but yeah. Yeah. Like, Wham. They, they, Wham. Can, they, can't Wham. All be, they can't all be the cat from Alien. Yeah. Oh my God. His, his animal directing uh, could use some work, at least at this point in his career. <laughs> so true so true yeah mordo any, anything to add uh you know how i'm gonna tell you something and you know what's scary about watching this mm-hmm. for a brief moment and i thought to myself and you know maybe somewhere in another life this could have dethroned memento i would have <gasps> i would have liked this more than memento that's the scary yeah. thought <laughs> Because well, I'm gonna be real with you, I put this at number three in my ranking. I no, I I completely sympathize though. I it, uh, I don't remember if I actually were you, th- did, did I like do like a Nolan ranking with you? Like, like I don't know, we were I in like DC you, one night. I think you did show it to me. Oh, I did. Yeah, because I put it, I put it under Oppenheimer, but above Dunkirk. Um, which I I will, but it's still really good like even though i like i said at the beginning ben like this is easily not you know my favorite nolan but it Uh is up there like i still really really like it you know yeah and obviously yeah it's it's still yeah it's it's i'd probably say top two for me Mm -hmm. yeah it's it's obviously like yeah like his like personal significance of what like yeah it kind of got me excited for it like that first watching but yeah i was like I, i i love i still like feel that same joy like, even if you don't get like the same review i get so excited for yeah. those moments when it does come along yeah yeah, it's yeah exactly exactly well, it's I, made. I the the one other thing that i usually am not a fan of is like it is kind of reliant on voiceover at some scenes because they are doing like a lot of diary reading but i think it makes sense in the plot yeah uh yeah. that'd be the one thing like usually i don't love but yeah i think it works with this yeah I want to say this is like my second favorite but i feel like people would like riot if i didn't put dark knight <laughs> high enough 
<laughs> hey, the top three as, so far is Memento, Dark Knight, and Prestige. Hey, as a dark, as the as the resident Dark Knight at number one uh, person here, I'd be completely okay if you put Dark Knight at number three. <laughs> like, it's it's still it's still in top three. Don't yeah. It's, oh, it's yeah. still probably one of no one's best works, but like I agree. Man, Prestige. Uh, I, hmm. <laughs> I think you got a runner up here with Memento. Yeah, no, honestly, oh, that's oh, pretty cool. Oh, and yeah. before we move on, we how we need to bring up the fact that Faust was mentioned. <gasps> that's right. I'm so glad you mentioned that. So, yeah, Swine, buddy. are you familiar with the yeah. Faust? Uh, are you familiar with Faust uh, at all? I don't think so. Are Are you familiar with the oh, Faust no. running uh, the running gag of Faust on this channel? no okay well oh, i'll just no. say listen listen to our faust episode episode 69 i'll i'll, okay. I'll, I'll give you the too long mm. didn't read I'll, I'll give you the short of it uh-huh. there's this movie called faust love of the damned it's one of mine and mordo's favorite films of all time we love it uh-huh. dearly and so now every time we hear faust like the word faust in any piece of media we go like ao <laughs> so and yeah oh yeah um, yeah, because uh, yeah, it, uh... it was during the scene where they hired Gerald to play uh, the uh, Hugh Jackman, to play uh, Angier's double. They hire him, and yeah. he's just like, I was in the theater, I played Hamlet, I played Faust, and we're just like, yo, Faust mentioned! <laughs> Faust, <laughs> Faust, baby, 10 out of 10, yeah, let's wow. fucking go! Yeah, so, highly recommend Faust, Love of the Damned, if you can even find it. I, it used to be on YouTube, but YouTube took it down, and to be honest, I don't blame them considering what's in the movie. <laughs> ah. <laughs> yeah, we ah. convinced we convinced our friends to watch it, and uh, we had we had sh- sh- quite the wonderful time. Yeah, we have the, the Faust is one of those movies where there are varying opinions, mostly negative opinions, but varying <laughs> negative opinions on that film. But even though we love it with all our heart, <laughs> just <'cause laughs> um, most definitely. Oh, dude, you need to you need to get Faust pilled, Ben. If if you're gonna be a regular oh, on this show, you need to get Faust pilled. <laughs> I think you need to be a regular you on Wheel it? Night. It's so, so it's F uh, F A U S T. Yeah, F A U S T. Yeah. So, cause like, uh, is it the twenty nineteen twenty six film or the twenty eleven film? The two thousand film. It's called Love from the Damned. Year 2000. Oh, Faust, uh, Love of the Damned. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so there's like an original like Faust story. You know, that's where the term, like, Faustian comes from. Oh, it was a 1961, too. Yeah, th- th- that's probably, like, you know, all, the majority of these are probably, like, the original Faust. We're talking about a movie that's based off of a comic that's, you know, has nothing to do with the original Faust tale. It's just, they just <laughs> okay. named the character Faust. Um, but... <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> so, um... Well, uh, can I talk about this prestige 4K that I mentioned earlier? Mm-hmm. Uh, you can, but first, uh, we have to just, we have to think. What does William think of the prestige? <laughs> I don't know. Or, or, or just what does what's what's William's thoughts right now? Hey, William, how you feeling, buddy? Slavery was bad. Waka waka. Good point, William. Good point. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, those are those were quite some words you just said. <laughs> anyway, yeah, yeah. Uh, what's that? Oh yeah, 4K. Explain the 4K. Yeah, so so anyway, uh yeah, so I bought this movie on 4K for the explicit purpose of eventually talking about it. Um but I'm glad I did because well, here's the funny thing. I did watch the Blu-ray version because it it's a 4K that comes with a Blu-ray, and I'm pretty sure the Blu-ray is just a reused Blu-ray from some other, like, they just had the extra disc, and so they just plopped it on there. I mean, the movie still looks great on Blu-ray, but I'm just glad I have it on 4K. Um, I did want to talk about the cover, because, so it is that, like, spiral, and then you get, like, Christian Bale and Hugh Jackman, but Mm -hmm. Hugh Jackman on the cover doesn't look like Hugh Jackman to me. Like, I'm looking at it. Yeah. He looks like... What? He looks like either Jude Law... Or Rufus Sewell. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Rufus Sewell. Mm-hmm. I have no so, idea. Uh, not really. He's the main oh, character the in. Chat. He's the main character in Dark City. I think I've mentioned that to you, Mordo. Um, and he's also the villain in the other 2006 magician movie called The Illusionist, which is often said to be like Diet Prestige. Um, mm-hmm. 
which I did watch. I did watch The Illusionist recently because I was like, oh, is it really died prestige? And no, it's not. It has nothing to do with the prestige. It's 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 awful. It's it's really bad. <laughs> Uh, even though it has Paul Giamatti in it, which is such a shame. He's such a good actor. And Rufus Sewell is a really good actor. Um, but hey, I just thought that was funny that like looking at this cover, I don't know. I, I... Yeah, it's a way it's um, yeah. Um, Cause yeah, I, I got the uh, steel book and it's the, um, the same cover. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not the 4k, unfortunately it's a, uh, it, I, I had the, this is one of my few uh, steel book imports. Mm. Um, it's at the, uh, yeah, the Blu-ray it's the Blu-ray is, Le Prestige. <laughs> Le Prestige. Uh, it, it, the main title is in English, but it is a, uh, yeah. a, a European issue. Okay. Um, oh, so look at you fun. two with 4Ks, but... and here I am with just DVDs of the early No, 2000s. it's, it's no. the uh, 2006 uh, French release on br- regular Blu-ray. Oh, that's cool. Well, actually, no. It's the exp- Blu-ray bonus disc. Yeah, describe the DVD, though, Mordo. I'm actually curious. Uh, I mean... It's, it's no, it's no, it's no memento. It's no panic. No. I mean, it's just, it's just a standard DVD. I mean, yeah, I'll grab yeah. it. Why not? Yeah. Uh, uh, whoa. So yeah, like I said before, I bought this at a second in Charles in Virginia because there is no second in Charles in Missouri. No. And um, yeah, I think it was just um. I don't know if they had any other variants of the movie there, but I just saw this. I'm just like, oh, this is a Nolan movie. I might have to watch it someday, so I'll just keep this. That way I'm prepared. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Um, it. I don't think there's much bonus features on it. Let's see. We got the director's notebook, the cinematic slight hand of Christopher Nolan. I'm sure that's just behind the scenes stuff. And then, oh, we have like an art gallery, it seems. And, uh, yeah, that's just pretty much it. Yeah. So, um. Yeah. I think I took like a, I think I took a recording of the menu because like I think there is something pretty cool about it. It's it's nothing like too fancy, but uh, like I do like how like um so there's so the visual like you have like on the right it's like so it's like this suspending card like image card and yeah. basically there's like two like there's like two different art pieces on each side and it's supposed to be I guess it's supposed to reference the magic tricks they do in the film. And mm. the quicker you spin it, the more like you see like a visual play out with it. Oh, and I like how cool. there's like different there, and there's like oh. different ones you can choose from. So there is the birdcage one. There is the one that I think looks like the door. There's the bullet catching one. And oh shoot, I forgot the, what the last one is. Hold up. <laughs> but you said you recorded it. I did record it, so I'll just show like uh, you know like 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 there'll probably be like a visual here. Uh, as I'm talking, yeah, but yeah I figured like recorded it. It's, it's like a 40 second visual because uh, I kind of recorded the ending because I because I wanted to try and like edit the ending to where it <laughs> to have Hello Zep play <laughs> <laughs> as like a dumb bit. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So yeah. So the first one you have the bird cage, and then the other one I believe is. Oh no! Wait, that's that's the uh, that's the water box um, mm. trick. That's not okay. the door. Okay, so yeah, so we have the birdcage one, and then the second one is of course the water box drowning trick. Uh, the f- the third one is the bullet catch, and the last one is uh, it's just it's just a plant in a vase. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Cause I, I, cause I know, I guess I know, just like magicians like to like pull out flowers out of the, the blue. So you know, yeah. I guess that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, it's like a visual, like cool visual, like interactive thing you can do, like on the menu. Yeah. Well, here's my question to you: Are you gonna keep this DVD? No, that I like the movie. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I might buy a I might buy like a Blu-ray or cool like the like the Blu-ray 4K release you guys got because I think that's a pretty cool uh cover art. It's yeah. just I think what you said is yeah. just uh what the heck were they doing here? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, you need to get them back in the studio, reshoot it, <laughs> reshoot it. <laughs> Go back to that studio and get it yeah. free, dude. Yeah, and so, I'll buy uh, it. Swine, are you gonna keep your steel book? I would imagine you are, but ah, uh, no, I'm gonna send it back to Europe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. <laughs> no, no, no. no, no. <laughs> no oh, yeah, I yeah. should I'm, mention. I'm definitely keeping it. Yeah. Oh, I should mention. This is like the one time like a Nolan film is under Disney. Because does anyone remember Touchstone? That's right. Yeah. Buena Vista. Oh, wow. They yeah. Distributed this. this. 
yeah, this film was released under Touchstone and, I guess, Warner. Oh, don't you dare go to sleep, Mon. I swear to God. So, yeah, this is this is technically a, a, a Nolan Disney film. Yeah, that's that's weird to, th to think about, but you are correct. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because this film was released and distributed by not just Warner Brothers, but Touchstone themselves. Yeah. At that's, least my DVD crazy. is. I don't know if it's yeah. different for theirs. I mean, again, I noticed at the beginning. Yeah, okay, yeah. My 4K says Touchstone. I don't know where I got Buena Vista from. I swear to God, okay. I feel like they said Buena Vista uh, at like the beginning. But I'm not seeing it. I'm pretty sure like they're both. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's, it's, just, it's, just, it's just. What's the difference? I'm, I'm I know, the like, I think at the end of the credit. I think, like. I think, like, at the end of the credits, it does, like, mention Buena Vista. Yeah, because again, yeah. that's like a that's a, that's that's under Disney. So I mean, but yes. yeah, Touchstone is also under Disney. So <laughs> it, either it's way, also, it's also on the uh, it's also on the sticker, the second Charles sticker, just Disney. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's under Disney. <laughs> this is this is the closest we're getting of a Disney Nolan film, folks. <laughs> oh, dude, that me I can't wait for the Nostalgia Critic to do his Disney Sember on the Prestige. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait no yeah that's right he has no excuse he he, yeah. he has to talk about this <laughs> yeah he has to <laughs> has he has he talked about a touchstone boy film before i feel like he has because he talked about roger rabbit on disney Sember. oh yeah 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 yeah. because that was at least under touchstone so of course yeah yeah exactly i'm sure in different states like you know Warner brothers had more of the higher up of releasing the film so mm -hmm. there's that. yeah no we've definitely seen this before we're like the same studios will release like two big studios will release the same film like you know warner brothers and sony released blade runner 2049 and uh, uh i think they also did that with terminator 3 I, my, Ter terminator 3 might have been under like a couple studios yeah well terminator no, 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 we like, had... i think it was under it was under warner brothers and sony because i can tell you right now yeah. there's a there's something unique about the dvd about i know something about the dvd about terminator 3 oh, i'll yeah. tell you that another, i'll tell you probably like after the show sure sure yeah. well I will say this. I'm definitely keeping the prestige. I'm so glad this was another Nolan film. I did love the second time around. It's very, very special movie. Clearly more special to you, Swine. But it's yes. it's special to me as well because it was even after the whole interstellar debacle. I'm glad I was able to watch a Nolan film and love it. And <laughs> I you know what? Part of the reason I wanted to do this episode now is because, well, we're living in a post Christopher Nolan actually winning Best Director world, so yeah. which deserved. I, yeah, we would. Like, is I can't believe this movie didn't get nominated for like at least Best Adapted Screenplay. Yeah, that would have been nice. Yeah, like it yeah. Well, because oh. we watched his his acceptance speech and like the announcer had said like this is like the eighth nomination Nolan has ever gotten, but this was his first win. And it's like eight mm. nominations, dude. And I just How? I want to mention this. I just want to mention this, like the way it's just, you know, this has nothing to do with the prestige, but like the, his acceptance speech, I don't know his, his like words on cinema and the art of film and like how he was said, like, you know, we're only like a hundred years into film. Like imagine yeah. what it was like being a hundred years into like painting or music. And he's like, I appreciate being a part of that. And it's just like, Oh, so wholesome. <laughs> That's why he's the goat. The yeah. goat. <laughs> so, I I, I want to I one more thing I want to uh, uh, appreciate for the uh, how to set up with Fallon I think it's the fact that part of the reason why it works is that they do have but well, obviously Michael Caine says like from the beginning like he believes like yeah you know, they're using a double like the fact that it they like we should know from early on that they are using a double mm -hmm. and then but it's not just a simple reveal oh it's a double it's how they're doing it yeah. and it's like it's so extre it's such an extreme reveal that it makes that that much better like okay it was just a double but how they're doing it is crazy and well, then the fact that like you see throughout the film they're always using disguises they're always yeah. using disguises and makeup and they're showing up like they have these convincing disguises so again that makes sense that they'd be able to commit to the bit so hard cuz they yeah. have all this stuff too well it's interesting that you say that cuz like uh the whole like oh they say like oh he's using a double early on but it's still like a shocking twist at the end where it's like okay he did have it's a like, double how do we tell him yeah. does he know <laughs> yeah it's just because yeah they, they they and they provide good reasoning why it's not a double because like they yeah. do commit to like that is extreme that you would intentionally 
bust off your fingers. Yeah, exactly. Like, that is an extreme thing to do, but it makes sense in the character that they would commit like that. Yeah. Too. No, I agree. I agree. <laughs> no, imagine like imagine like the th- it ended being like. So how did you do the door trick? And I'm like, my brother in Christ, there was just a tunnel I can just walk through on to the yeah. other end. <laughs> a oh. ton of lag. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Roll credits. Roll credits. <laughs> so you tell me all this was yeah, it's for nothing. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well fuck dice. <laughs> <sighs> great movie oh so true yeah well do we want to talk about another great movie sure (laughs) okay so obviously when thinking of how i was going to do the prestige episode i'm like what do i pair it with do i pair it with the illusionist no i'm not going to do that i'm going to do it with another film that has the that begins with the word the and has a p word in the title um and you know we 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 talked about a toxic yaoi you might as well talk about a wholesome one yeah that's true too yeah (laughs) you know what it's true the two main characters of the prestige they're they're very similar to the two main characters of the producers 1967 you know it's funny you said that i'm just saying myself this was the prestige during simpler times (laughs) yeah (laughs) well this is a this is a lot less trick of themselves doesn't really pay off very well this this was before the incident (laughs) Yeah, <laughs> this is definitely a lot less complex than the prestige the producers it's it's a comedy film from the late 60s from the great mel brooks uh one of i think this is his first movie he ever directed if not it's one of his earliest ones um, it's so funny because like when is, I heard, he's, not really, he's barely in it yeah well he's so funny because like when i heard when i heard no, that he, name when I heard that name, I was just like, wait, why does Mel Brooks sound familiar? And I realized, oh my god, that's Big Weld. It's Big Weld. Yeah, and that's <laughs> yeah. true. He is he is the he gets like a un, he gets like a cameo line at the at during the yeah, during like, the performance. Like, which is why, to be fair, it's one of the better uh, yeah. No, it's a great. I, I did not know. The Nazi party. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't I, I did not know that the voice actor of fucking Big Weld directed movies yeah. in his day. Oh yeah, no. So Mel Brooks. No, you're right because when I was a kid and I watched Robots as a kid and I loved it. I that was that was my introduction to Mel Brooks as well. But th- and then as I got mm-hmm. older, I realized no, he had like an, a whole ass career before Big Weld. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, and he did. Uh, space he does have a really iconic voice too. Like, he is. You're, you're a really good writer, and you're also you're a writer director. Yeah, he's got a really iconic voice, and yeah, comedic timing is also really good. Yeah, so. We we uh, was Frank, Young Frankenstein before this? No, the, no, 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 way after. So yeah, so okay. we've talked about a couple of his movies on the podcast. That being Young Frankenstein and Blazing Saddles, two movies I love wholeheartedly. I think they're some of my favorite comedies, some of my favorite movies of all time. So, and Producers is one I definitely wanted to revisit because I've seen this a couple of times, and I'm glad you guys agreed to talk about it today because i'm and i'm glad i was able to introduce it to you guys because was this your so mm-hmm. mordo you go first was this your first time watching the producers i i'm a, i'm a review of you all i i finished what no one i finished watching the movie uh we we just started recording <laughs> <laughs> i have a bad habit doing everything last minute i need to fix that but also no. just my so what, it, how, it, what was your t- it's so rough it's so <laughs> rough refreshing. being in my shoes guys yeah life is rough you don't we don't yeah. want to be in you don't want to be in my shoes no <laughs> but what'd you think are they yaoi <laughs> <laughs> yeah this was a, this was like a f- fun simple comedy film um yeah. I, I i definitely digged it i definitely know yeah. like when i first watching this i was like what the fuck is going on why um, why am i watching a makeout uh, yeah. section with two old ga- people yeah. what is going on did i walk into something is this the right film is, is this some is, did i did this start right is this the opening scene and i'm just, I'm just what is happening yeah. I, I was a little confused for a second just like um it you know oh yeah the, the first 20 minutes is insanity yeah oh, no, yeah it is just it i'm is. watching a makeout section with old people and i'm like okay yeah when i compare it to like his other movies i'm like is it as zany as those other ones but in in a way it is because it's because it's not trying to be like young frankenstein or blazing saddles or space balls yeah. where it's like inherently a parody or a satire like it's a wholly original concept 
for a Mel mm-hmm. Brooks movie. Um, but with that said, it still has that like zany. It has like very. It has very much the zany feel that you know those satire and parody movies would have. Um, but like in the war in the realm of like an original story. So, uh, Swine, I'm curious, what did you think of this? Um, so yeah, this was also my first time. It's been on my, uh, it's been something I've been meaning to watch for, it's been on my watch list for a while now. Um, and yeah, obviously as far as like Mel Brooks goes, like Spaceballs is another early film that I love a lot. So yeah, I've known Mel Brooks for a long time. Um, and yeah, I, I, I enjoyed it. It was, um, yeah, I, I had a good time. And I've, I have watched the, I, I've known the, uh, springtime for Hitler scene. Yeah. Um, I've, I've watched that the, at least like the first opening musical number, a, uh, handful of times. So that's where I like knew this film from. Yeah. Um, and obviously that, that's a, that's a pretty good, that, that's pretty fun. It's... I think that, um, uh, yeah, so like, it, it's. It's a very good comedy film. I liked it. it isn't it a shame yeah. that Springtime for Hitler is as catchy of a song as it is? Because <laughs> so sometimes no, honestly, I'll just be... I, I really I really like the song. Oh, the song is it's just so good. Just <laughs> it's, spring it's so good. time for uh, Hitler. Well, you got to be in the right environment to sing it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like a Defier's face that Donald Duck cartoon. That is a really catchy song, even though. It has the lyric of the Fiora's face or, or the master of the race. And you're just like, I shouldn't be singing this, but it's so catchy. <laughs> Look out, here comes the master race. Yeah. <laughs> super duper superman. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, I, th- I remember the, um, yeah, I, I first heard about it in, um, like, yeah, so, so people were singing in like marching band. Obviously, like, that's a, uh, <laughs> Uh, it's it's catchy like even just like yeah, people sing it around like the thing was that i um i was on the ox one time at a uh, marching band so i thought it'd be funny to pull it up everyone got like gave me looks not because like because it was the same people who like i had heard singing it mm-hmm. they were they knew the 2005 version was a thing which i oh. i compared both like in that moment i like okay the original one's a lot better <laughs> yeah um yeah i guess they were used to the 2005 one though so they gave me weird looks like, yeah they're lost though I, i'm pretty sure this is the better version i agree so well i don't want to get too much into the 2005 movie but i will say mm-hmm. obviously i prefer the original um because Agreed. so for one thing let's get down to the main characters that being max bialystok and leo bloom so well let's get into leo bloom because even though max is he's more the main focus we got to talk about leo bloom because he's played by willy wonka so i feel like a lot of people want to yeah. hear about that oh yeah yeah yeah. because like i saw him i'm like why does this guy look familiar to me and i hear him just like yelling i'm like wait why does this guy sound like the guy who shouted you get in the oh my god that's willy wonka yeah yeah <laughs> i want to talk about gene wilder because within his first scene of the movie i'm like all right no wonder this guy was like is like considered like a genius comedy talent like within the first scene i was like already hooked with his character because i don't know so it's the scene when like max and hold me touch me are like you know kind of getting frisky and so then he like barges Uh in and he's just like hello oh my god just the way that gene wilder (laughs) says that it's so Um. funny he he, he's so say oops and leave yeah (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's so funny this guy because he's he's like such a crazy character like he seems reserved yeah. until like you like do like, until you like set him off and then he's just screaming his head off like rubbing yeah. his face on yeah, his blue it's, blanket. it's incredibly like socially awkward I, I yeah i don't my only i had like i don't know if this is like supposed to be like he like stereotypically jewish like i do like I, I don't exactly know how that works, but like I do see a lot of similarities, like how he acts and how the, like uh, Kyle's cousin Kyle in South Park, mm. which is supposed to be very stereotypically Jewish. So I guess that's where they're going with. Uh, besides the fact he's the accountant, I guess is and that like does tone down a bit. But yeah, it's like he's just like it feels like he's in agony when he's like getting yeah. yelled. At. <laughs> like he's just like like I don't know what the <laughs> like, he's like. This is complete insanity. Like he's just like so, like this high pitched nasally voice. Yeah. Like, ah. My blue <laughs> like, blanket. My blue like blanket. Screaming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that came okay, up. Okay, Linus. Was, that was, like, 
It was very You're, Linus tier. Yeah, I, <laughs> Linus moment. Yeah, like yeah. yeah, I'm not sure. Like he's supposed to be like like kind of like autistic, I guess, or like Jewish or both. I don't know if it's the yeah, inspiration just there. Just definitely but, yeah, definitely socially goes, like, awkward for sure. Yeah. Um. And yeah, it does. He gets like there once the relationship develops. Like he kind of like helps them like become a little more like socially apt. Yeah. Like as the film goes, it's kind of nice. But I do like. What works is like he is like playing it like straight. Like yes. he's like, he does a really good job like playing this like, same character straight. Like yeah. he is, he feels like they like socially, like socially awkward. And yet it's like I think that I'm gonna bring up the 2005 one. Uh, I I haven't watched it, but they do like cast like all these like they recast him as uh, Matthew Broderick, which I yeah. think uh, <laughs> sounds like a horrible idea. It's um, oh no, I, yeah, they, I can speak on that, but no, you finish your thought. <laughs> um yeah they're just like yeah like casting all these like traditional comedians like i think that what makes this work is that they are like playing it it you have like these straight like the characters all straight men and it's just the fact they're in these like ridiculous like they're, they're taking this concept seriously and they're like all the surrounding stuff around them is what is ridiculous like they're supposed to be straight men but they they you know, they cast recast them as, like, famous comedians for the uh, 2005 one. Yeah, so Gene Wilder, I think, really works in this role because, like we're saying, he has, like, these outbursts of and he's, like, screaming and he's just like, my blue blanket, my blue blanket. And, yeah. like, he, like, will just fall back on, like, say, like when they realize that, like, the show is a hit and he starts, like, pulling at his ear and he starts going, like, this is so-and-so. 55 percent mrs so-and-so 45 percent it's just like like little like character ticks like that are really cool like they're funny yeah. but i do buy him as an actual character like i can buy this person like actually interacting in this world like it's not just a mm -hmm. lull funny to random will ferrell performance or yeah or like yeah so matthew broderick does play him in the 2005 version and it's incredibly awkward because he's just like because like you can see him like screaming, but like Matthew Broderick's not that good of an actor where he can like actually be kind of wild and still come across as naturally wild. Like he, he feels mm -hmm. like he's really hamming it up and he feels like he's holding back and it's, it's painful to watch to say the least. Yeah. <laughs> so Gene Wilder is far better as this character. Um, but can we talk about Max Bialystok uh, played by zero Mostel? So, I don't know if you guys are familiar with this guy because I'm not. This is the only movie I've seen him in. That technically I've see, also seen him in Watership Wait. Down. I, I don't remember being in Watership Down though. Zero Zero Monstel. That's so that's the so that's the actor's name who plays Max in this movie. The, his name is Zero Monstel. <laughs> if I'm correct, I think I only know him because I think I've seen the episode where he guest stars on the Muppet Show. He might have starred on the Muppet Show. Hmm. Yeah, that, I think he did. Yeah, but like, he's really good as Max Bialystok. Like, yeah, he's so funny. Like, I would say Gene Wilder is the best performance in this movie, but yeah, he's definitely a close yeah, second. Was. Max. So, just I don't know. He's he's such a unique. Well, not only is he a unique looking guy, because like, for first of all, worst hairdo I've seen in a movie ever, <laughs> intentionally so. But that hair yeah, is just over. awful. Like, it's so terrible looking. Um, but just the way he acts too, is just, it's so funny to see him like interact with like an example. Uh, this movie has probably one of my favorite, like addressing the audience slash fourth wall breaks in any movie I've ever seen. And it's when, you know, Leo's like kind of freaking out and like, you know, Max kind of backs away from him and he starts like smiling and Leo's like starting to calm down and he's like, Oh, thank you for smiling. You're making me feel better. And and zero, and uh, Max goes, he goes like, ah, oh, well, you know what they say when you smile, the world smiles back. <laughs> and then he looks towards the camera and he goes, this man should be in a straight jacket. Like every time I watch that, I'm in hysterics. <laughs> I think it's the way that he, the way that he transitions from smiling to then like looking at the camera and being like, this man should be in a straight jacket. It's it's perfect. Like I can't, it can't get any more perfect. And of course, in the 2005 version, when Nathan Lane says the same line, it's not as funny because he doesn't address the audience. He like talks to some statue or something, and it's it's not as funny. It, it's not as funny. Uh -huh. um, 
But yeah, no, I just I, I love these two characters and just I feel like these two really are they really do embody Leo and Max. I feel like it's the perfect it, it's the perfect duo because one of them is like a severe con artist and the other one is just like this really nervous guy, like who's not entirely sure <laughs> whether or not he wants to go along with the con. But he wants that glory, so he's willing to go through with it. And that it just leads to such perfect like comedic moments. Yeah, yeah, they, they absolutely just they they play off each other because yeah, they got like yeah, the sociopath kind of just like dragging uh, Gene Wilder's character into it. Yeah, and, yeah, like Gene Wilder is an excellent like I, he does a really good job like of, like character studying like really embodying his characters. You can see that like Willy Wonka. So yeah, yeah. So he's really able to he he's just fantastic at committing to the bit. Yeah, like, it is a very different through through. performance than Willy Wonka, but you can definitely see the elements he would bring over to Willy Wonka in this performance. Yeah, yeah I agree. Um, can we talk about uh, Franz Liebkind in this movie, played by Kenneth Mars, who you guys don't immediately recognize, but he's the voice of Triton in the original Little Mermaid, fun fact. Huh. That's cool. I, I'm going to be real. I have not seen Little Mermaid. Okay, well, he is the father in that, well, <laughs> in that movie, I swear. He's King Triton. You need to get on that. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, King Triton does not have that thick of a uh, German accent. No, no, uh, he does not. No, he, he just, the, that, one part, that one part where he goes up to Ursula, and Ursula's like, what do you want? He's like, you will be unconscious. <laughs> you will please be unconscious. <laughs> but you know what? Like, this... This is a very fascinating character to me because he's played by Will Ferrell in the remake. And look, I'm not a huge anti Will Ferrell guy. It's just he can be a little annoying at times. And I'm just like, Mm -hmm. okay, I get it. You were an elf. It was funny, but you can't do that with every performance. Whereas I feel like Kenneth Mars, he really like embodies this like crazy guy really well. Because he also just gets like some of the best lines. Like I said, you will please be unconscious. That had me in hysterics. Or like the part where like they're actually watching the first performance and he's just like, that's not what the Fiora would be like. And the woman's just like, hey, quiet down. He's like, you are the audience. I am the author. I outrank you. (laughs) (laughs) It's again, some of the best lines and he delivers them like in a way that's both really funny but you also buy him as a character it doesn't go too far yeah. into absurdity like what will ferrell does in the remake like you you mm-hmm. it's not just like a performance for the audience like it feels like a genuine like just crazy character right i just looked up i just realized that old righty from the beginning she doesn't have a name she's just called hold me touch me yeah a lot of the old <laughs> ladies are just called like what they what he says to them so they are like hold me touch me <laughs> <laughs> is the name of her. That, that is so fucking okay yeah so that that is something that uh is like kind of, kind of that's kind of a running thing with this movie is the max kind of swindles old ladies out of their money just by yeah quote unquote making them feel young again <laughs> like it like we said like the opening credits are just him and this old lady fooling around and like every once in a while it'll like screenshot on them and it'll just be like casting by so and so or you know yeah. edited by so and so. I really like that style too. Oh, like, it's, it's so like, good. You know, it's really oh, like yeah. ridiculous like it's ridiculous like um uh still frames. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> that they're freezing in on. Oh yeah, my god, like their the, faces uh, like are the funny every time. It, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely one of the more entertaining uh opening, opening credits. credits. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, I just found an interesting. I just found an interesting uh, letterbox review of this called uh, for for the producers, and it just goes, "This happened to my buddy Lin Manuel." <laughs> <laughs> well, he was a theater guy, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, so there's another. There's a couple other characters I really want to focus on, and that is um, the director Roger Debris, uh, <laughs> who's. Who I love this director guy. He's so funny. And his assistant was a Carmen Gia. Like, I love them. I think they're so funny. And just like, even just like the way their apartment is designed and like you see all their like tacky furniture and like the statues mm-hmm. everywhere. Like even the set design, you know, they don't even have to say anything funny. Like just the set design is adds to the comedy that the itself, you know? Yeah. 
Yeah, I do like the, and yeah, I think that it's, part of what's funny is that, like, the, the uh, end result, like, the end uh, musical that you get is, or yeah, the, the play, like, makes sense that they would have made it, like I said. Yeah. <laughs> like, it, it's very comedic, and it also makes sense that you get these, like, this specific cast of characters, you can see that this would be an end product for that. Yeah, this. And yeah, like, yeah, they're, they're well done characters. They're these insane um, artists that are taking, you know, the this this insane Nazis play of like glorifying Hitler, yeah. but like being so oblivious to that, just being like, oh, we got to make it this like grandiose like musical number, and it's just like they're so right. oblivious to that. But that's just what makes it even <laughs> funnier, you know? Because right. I just love that nobody questions that until like <laughs> opening night, until like once the play is actually like. I, like once the play is actually being performed and that's when everyone's just like wait a minute what is this like nobody was <laughs> yeah. questioning it up until that i just i love that like it just leads to yeah just, you just, like commit to, like i just not really commit to the bit yeah like you're like so invested in like making like how does this like, yeah. work that you don't even stop to think that maybe this shouldn't work right exactly yeah because again it's it's yeah. one of the one of the things i love about this movie is that it's it's like I said, it's such a unique plot because it's basically these two guys want to get rich quick scheme. All right. What do they have to do? They're just like, oh, what if we make a play, but we make it in t- so intentionally bad that it has to bomb, in which case yeah. nobody will want their money back. So we just get to pocket the money that we didn't put towards the play. Like that's just it. It's such a unique concept for a story. And I feel like they take advantage of that very well because again they hire the worst screenwriter which is like this crazed nazi they hire the (laughs) worst director which is like this insane this insane artist who just lives in like some manhattan apartment and wears a dress dressed as anastasia of all people (laughs) um and they hire the worst actors let's get into uh lsd or uh lorenzo saint dubois Played by the legendary Dick Sean. Again, another actor you guys may not Dude. recognize, but he's I'll just I'll just say straight up, he's the voice of Snow Miser in uh Year Without a Santa Claus. Hey, that's pretty good. I like that. Yeah. Yo. Um I feel like the I I can't say for sure. I feel like this guy's gotta like I I saw him act, he was like, This is Robin like not like I, I didn't think this was Robin Williams, but this is like how Robin Williams acts. Like mm. this is I, I, I feel like there's got to be, like, an influence on how, like, Robin Williams developed it. Like, at least, like, for his, like, co- how he does his comedy. Yeah. Is, like, a, uh, emulates, like, how this guy was playing Hitler. Yeah. He... Like, the way he would um, talk and, like, yeah, it was, like, smooth. Yeah. Hey, I'm, hey. I'm also familiar with Dick Sean because he's in this other movie called It's a Mad, 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 Mad World. That's a movie for another time. That's one of my all-time mm-hmm. favorite comedies. But he's in that. And I just remember him being, like one of the standout characters in that movie, which is a big deal because that's a whole ensemble of interesting characters in that movie. Um, but yeah, the, no, I think he rocks even better in this one because you honestly believe that I don't think they, I would like to, I don't know if this is actually true, but I would like to believe that Mel Brooks didn't write anything in the script for this character and just let him go wild because everything right. he does feels genuine it feels like he's coming up with it on the spot and that makes it far more funnier yeah and that's got to be like how the character that's how the character would work i gotta imagine yeah i don't i you know yeah i don't know how much is like there's some stuff that's like yeah they probably wrote it like you gotta assume like in universe like it'd be assumed that they like, did write it like the um i don't even know how the uh um was it the leave me alone uh, line i can't remember how they uh i don't know german i can't remember how that got set up yeah leave are you lean me or are you <laughs> leave me alone or whatever. yeah exactly <laughs> yeah it's just one of those one of those like german just like wordplay it's oh it's so yeah. good it's so good um what I, you, mordo I'll, I'll let you uh, take over because i feel like i've been talking a lot i apologize are you though <laughs> I, to, to your credit, you're the only one who's watched this more than once. I, I love um, this movie. I'm sorry. I just, I just love talking about it. No, no. Actually, I, I mean, I don't, I don't blame yeah. you. You know this. You know this film more than we do. Yeah, I think. It, yeah. I think it only makes I, sense that you know. I think. I think me and me and Ben here had the other hand with Prestige. You have the other hand with producers. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love the. I love the Prestige, as I said. But yeah, I think I do love this movie more just because it means a lot more to me because I'm such a huge mm-hmm. Mel Brooks fan. Um, 
Oh yeah. And just and yeah, no, just something about this and I think while watching this movie it really connected with me why I think I love it and it's the idea of like these guys made this intentionally bad product and people still loved it because I can relate to that as somebody who sometimes loves intentionally bad movies it it it's quite the experience yeah. you know seeing seeing and the fact that this came out like well over like, almost 60 years ago and it and i can still like relate it to my current lifestyle is just that's that's really cool to yeah. me yeah and what i appreciate about um like i said i like i've seen like i'd seen the uh, springtime for hitler scene beforehand mm-hmm. um and i gotta appreciate it a lot because it's for like not just being like a um like it's integral it's like it's kind of like the I, it was quite the climax, but like it is integral to the story. It's not. I, I kind of es- expected it to be stuff like that. Seems to always feel like in a movie is going to end up like a Family Guy funny moment type of thing, like mm. cutaway gag, mm. <laughs> like not actually like it, like it, you're doing like some antics to the side, and it's not going to be important. But the fact that like actually it was like the entire movie is building up to that is kind of, is pretty impressive. Yeah, and then I also didn't expect it to um, actually turn out well. Like I like because I'd seen like the people's like the clips of the people's reactions. I didn't realize that people are actually gonna end up liking it. Well, that, yeah, I'd never yeah. seen the uh, the follow up yeah. like of how uh, Hitler acts, and I'd never actually yeah. seen Hitler act in it before. Well, again, like it's that thing is like okay, you did everything wrong, but there is still that like okay there is still that spectacle to it where it's so terrible and so in such yeah. bad taste that you kind of can't help but like admire it you know like that's the thing with that's what you know i feel like making dick sean's performance so integral to this play is so important like that I guess that like that's why that's so important to show that like you know the, as it bad as you're gonna make something sometimes that failure is far more interesting than making something uh, yeah. genuine, you know? Where did I go right? <laughs> it's such a good line. Where did I go right? <laughs> yeah, and then it has the... Uh, I, it's kind of like... It, there's nothing wrong with it, but yeah, it does have like the old... Uh, like the old, like the the little... Uh, the morals monologue at the end. Like, has, oh yeah, it's... Uh, well, there's got to be a little moral to the comedy. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, like, yeah, they have uh, this, uh, Gene Wilder's little monologue at the end, which is fine. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, then they uh, they go, <laughs> yeah, they're in jail doing the exact, or, yeah, say they learn their lesson, and then they go to jail, and they do the exact same they thing. They do the exact same thing. Yeah, no, I love that. It's so it's so funny. Um, <laughs> no, oh, yeah, I, can we, you know, it's funny. Um, yeah. I don't know why, but, like, when we, before the court trial scene, but, like, you know how, like, what, like, they had, like, the bomb thing going I think they were like going to try and do blow up the theater. <laughs> they blow up the theater. <laughs> yeah, and I thought like after that, I thought it cut to a funeral where like, oh, did they die? Oh, wait, did yeah. that uh, that that German guy die? Oh, <laughs> well, he's in bandages. <laughs> yeah, oh, they're in court. He's, he's he's in the the full like bandage like, cast like his entire body. <laughs> I was about to say like, oh my god, wait, are we in a funeral now? Oh. <laughs> Oh yeah, no! Wait, yeah. he's just he's just he's just in bandage. Oh, we're in court. That's what's going yeah, on. Yeah, we're in, we're in court. Which yes, they did. Not only did they c- commit fraud, but they also blew up a theater. So of course they're going to be in yeah. court. Um, I know, love. Um, I. You love what? No, I was just going to say uh, yes. No, um, <laughs> I just wanted to mention. <laughs> oh, I feel like I have to mention this for Buster's sake. Um, so one of the jury members the one who actually says like your honor we find these the, we find these people incredibly guilty that guy that guy was in surviving christmas he played duda so no <laughs> duda <laughs> yeah way <laughs> surviving christmas from the same director as kung fu panda 4 <laughs> i'm blowing my brains out <laughs> Sorry, I, just, I I had to mention oh, that. I boy. I have to make a connection to past too many movies. No, episodes. no, I I I, I agree. Mm-hmm. But um, I I will say though, like I think um, when you, when you said earlier how like they're trying to like make a flop musical show to where that way people won't get their money back. I will admit I am still a bit confused on like the whole game plan was with this. Hmm. Well, so the so as as best as i can understand it i think it's explained gene wilder makes the claim he's just like you know the irs doesn't care about a a play that flops so like you know 
with all that extra money, they they wouldn't care because they're just like, ah, it flies. No, it's not because they still have to. They still have to flee because, like, well, obviously, like, that's the, the other thing too. Easy. Yeah, it's that the investors wouldn't be wouldn't come back to um, right. They wouldn't want to. They wouldn't want anything back to the investors because yeah, there wouldn't be any money to be made. Yeah, back. exactly. And of course, it's like it said. Gene Wilder says, like, you know, <laughs> what did he really do wrong? He just. Ta- he just made these old ladies feel young again and the old ladies are just like yeah he did <laughs> it's just like okay they wanted to be swindled <laughs> yeah. so i it is a little weird i will admit because it's kind of weird just like uh how does this work exactly like how is the scheme supposed to go and how does it how, how is it a failure that it's actually a success you know because like wouldn't that mean like it's gonna go on and make more money i yeah, that part I also uh, because don't... like they they can't they they sign contracts that they can't uphold. They to, can't obviously. uphold yeah, to they can't, that's like give everyone fifty percent, one hundred percent. Oh right, right. They can't give like five hundred percent. You can only give one hundred percent. That's a good point. Yeah, so it's it's all like legal and economic jargon, I'm sure. But yeah. I feel like yeah, even, yeah, it's... even though I don't entirely understand that, I'm still I still find it an entertaining movie. Like even though there are those aspects I don't understand. You know, mm-hmm. yeah, it's not. It, 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 they try to, yeah. They, at the end of the day, it's they, um, it's what they would owe to the investors, right? Yeah, is yeah. If they don't make money, then they don't owe anything. Yeah, to exactly. It flops. I see. Yeah, so then they can just run away with the uh, all the investment which, money. Yeah, they then. were gonna go to Rio yeah. with Ula. <laughs> yeah. Which can can I say Ula is such an interesting character in that she's kind of just very much just a side character in this she has little mm-hmm. to no personality and then she's played by uma thurman in the remake and they try to give her more of a personality but she still she basically has the exact same personality in this movie as she, you know but like mm-hmm. it's given to like a major a-list star as uma thurman yeah. and they give her more scenes and so it's just weird. It's just like, okay, this doesn't work as well. Like, Ula works as, like, seriously on the side. Like, they don't really consider her, like, a very important part of the movie, which... Yeah, I want to dig deeper into the character who, when you say go to work, she turns on a radio and starts dancing. Yeah. <laughs> I want to know her coder- character motivation. Yeah. <laughs> Get back to work! Yeah. <laughs> no, so I appreciate that bit a lot. Got a stock in bloom. You know, when you say Irma Thurman, my brain just goes, the Fall Out Boy song? Yeah, that's, that's right. There was a Fall Out Boy song yeah. named Irma Thurman. Yeah, no, I'm not and talking that, about and that, Mia and Wallace that song and Pulp Fiction. And, and, and that song samples the Monsters theme song. Oh, yeah, that yeah it does, huh? Yeah. What's the connection? Oh, no, between... I listen to. But what's the connection there between Uma Thurman and the Monsters? Well, the Monsters kind of has Frankenstein. And, I don't know. Uh, I just like Fall Out Boy. Yeah, Mel Brooks made Young Frankenstein. That's the connection. Okay, that's the connection. <laughs> Frankenstein. Monsters. I don't know. I just, I just, monster. I don't know. I just like Fall Out Boy. Yeah. No, I don't blame you. <laughs> <laughs> good oh yeah no but that oh god there's just so many there's so many memorable quotes in this movie and so many like just really funny scenes that just have me like generally have me wheezing because i think it's so funny like oh god the like the fact that he's when they blow up the theater and franz is just like up oh, yep you see that's the fast fuse <laughs> <laughs> he's just like, oh shit! <laughs> and then they just run, and then it it explodes. It's, yeah. it's so funny. Yeah, that's one of the most budget explosions I've ever seen in my life. It, to be fair, yes. And they don't even blow up the theater in the remake, so they they didn't have to what? do that. I I know. I was so disappointed. Yeah, the remake does some weird things in the end because so, uh, so well. First of all, the remake is weird because they don't have the character of LSD at all. Oh. Like the the so instead they hired so they do this weird thing where they have Franz play Hitler. They're just like, oh, we're gonna have Franz play Hitler, but then he like breaks his leg on opening night, and they're like, oh, Roger, you should be Hitler. And it's like, what what was the point of making Franz Hitler? Like, what what is happening here? Like, this makes no sense because then it like makes you wonder. It's like, okay, you went through all this rehearsal 
with Franz as Hitler. And so then you go to opening night and, you know, it's a disaster with Roger now as Hitler. But Franz is mad because he's just like, you made him look like a fool. It's just like, yeah, you were in rehearsal, dude. Like, what? What do you? Why are you bringing this up now? Like it, 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 it makes zero sense. It's like yeah. when you take out the character of LSD, and I get why they probably cut him out because they're just like, oh, that character is so intertwined. Like Dick Sean is the only actor I can think of who would have done that character justice because it's such a unique character to him. But then it's it, it's the same. I brought it up in my review on Letterbox. It's like it's I it's I feel like it's the same like thought process is why they didn't recast uh james earl jones as mufasa in the lion king remake they're just like oh he's you know he's such an iconic character he's such an iconic role for him like we can't recast him it's like okay fine but are you thereby saying that jeremy irons as scar was not iconic are you saying that Mm -hmm. you know uh pat carroll as ursula in the original little mermaid was not iconic is that what well i mean they didn't they recasted her because pat carroll was dead by the time they did the remake of little mermaid but you, but you get what i'm saying like okay you refuse to recast this character and yet you still recast the other characters as if it's fine like i it, it's just such a weird thought process to me that like oh no this one's untouchable but these aren't it's like I don't know. I don't. I don't. Yeah. I don't like choosing favorites in that regard. Like, I don't think that's fair. I think they refer back to uh, it's a very pop culture-y, uh choice for that, and obviously, like, yeah, I think James Earl Jones, like, obviously, like one of the most iconic voices, and I think yeah. they just refer back to oh, it's it's what the pub- general public will the general public will appreciate yeah. it. But again, um, th- like, people won't be as mad if we recast Scar. Well, again, though, like Jeremy Irons is like has like that iconic scar voice like he's what absolutely gives, yeah yeah so it, it just makes no but people sense don't know his name like the yeah the the, the average movie goer doesn't know who he yeah, is yeah they, they, they don't care fair they're, enough they're, they're, they're uh, your typical like quote-unquote movie fans gonna, yeah. oh yeah i love jimmy yeah. Earl jones he's darth vader and he's uh that's true too class i love him. that's true that's true but again it's still it's entirely fair but yeah they're not as like no, they but are, I get what you're have, saying. Like the deep knowledge, yeah, 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 yeah. Lore knowledge. Yeah, I, yeah. We're we're using our executive brains here. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, no. I just, I, I mean, I guess I'm kind of happy that they didn't recast LSD in the remake, where they're just like, oh, now we have this guy doing a bad Dick Sean impression. But it's just like, I don't know. You, you really, you, a, a good chunk of what makes the movie so funny is lost. Then, meaning, well, again, like I said, the remake is not as good. Like, I, I did say. Like, I do think the Roger and his assistant stuff in that in the remake are very good. Like, I think they are. I don't think they're better than the original versions. I think they are definitely unique in their own way and they definitely work. And the actor who plays Roger in the remake does play him in the uh, Broadway production of the remake. So the remake is Mm. it's technically what the recent Mean Girls was, where it's not a remake of the movie. It's an adaptation of the musical, so that's what it's going okay. for. But they still have similar plot lines because you know it's still the same story. But so, and again, like I said, like so much like how in the Mean Girls remake this year, the woman who plays Regina George also played Regina George on stage. She also plays her in the movie. It's the same thing here. The guy who played Roger Debris on stage plays him in this movie, and he's very good. I prefer the original, but I will give credit where credit is due. He's very, very good. So there, there's that. One, one good thing. Good job, producers remake. <laughs> mm-hmm. Say, um, does Broderick sing in the movie too? Yes, he, he gets a... several songs. And he's not a terrible singer, but I, mm-hmm. I still prefer And they Jim recast Lally. him in uh, Lion King. As, uh, well, was it the, the Weezer singer? <laughs> Was it, who, uh it was donald was yeah donald glover was or, uh, recast was the was the new song no no when they uh they because roderick doesn't do the singing oh person, no yeah no he doesn't lion. sing in uh the original lion king oh i i don't know who the actual singer it? i don't remember i it's, a, it's a, someone in a band i can't remember what i'm not good with uh you know Mordo, you say something and i'll and i'll look this up uh um 
A pineapple on banana. <laughs> I agree. I thought I could pull a Nevermore there. Um, uh, Jason Weaver. You, you, you guys ever just play uh, Zaboomafu yeah. on the PlayStation? <laughs> play Zaboomafu on the PlayStation? Yeah, all the time. You guys ever just play? <laughs> yeah. I'm so glad you said Zaboomafu. <laughs> that reminds that takes me back to the days of PBS oh, Kids. Yeah. So true. So, yeah. So. Yeah, I, I think I definitely say like I uh, I think the like I know we talked about Swing Time for Hitler, but like yeah, like I think the music here is like really good and I really like the score. But yes, yeah, I agree. Like not only Oh yeah, the score is great. The score is really, really good. And I mean, yeah, I feel like that's what makes this such a unique movie. Because even though they're going for such an intentionally bad uh play, Springtime for Hitler is such a catchy song. So then, like, it makes it far more memorable. Because if it was like an intentionally bad song, it's just like, all right, it's still bad. But know? no, it wasn't. It wasn't. Jay, it's um the lead singer for Toto. Oh, um, singer for Africa. Okay. Like, no kidding. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I guess that makes sense. Lead singer of Africa. Uh, lead singer of Toto. I kind of assumed this whole movie was going to be a musical, but then I realized, oh no, that's just for like the Hitler stuff. Yeah, but that, that'd be cool just to see this as a full blown musical, though. I well, to that's see where that would have went. Well, that's what the remake is. It's a full blown musical, so like that oh, has really? actual songs and yeah, and production value, and they are impressive. But I don't feel it's in service of the story. Like I still feel like the story is like just a a cheap imitation of this movie. Like because it's just like these characters yeah. like reciting these lines you're familiar with and then occasionally they break out into song whereas i feel like yes i agree i feel like i feel maybe actually seeing the broadway version like the actual like stage version of this of like this the original stage version i feel like would be a really cool um experience because i have seen stage versions of stories i'm familiar with as movies like i've seen like a christmas carol on stage i've seen like matilda on stage and those are really cool experiences i think i would prefer the original movies or you know whatever movie version i prefer of a christmas carol because those because i do prefer film but i feel like viewing those as live productions is still really really cool i think it becomes a problem when then it comes back full circle into being a movie version of those stage productions in which case again you get the mean girls 2024 and you get the producers 2005 and it's like okay the the unique the unique value that the stage version brought is gone because now you're just bringing it to the movies and it 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 doesn't work like as much as i love film there is a unique experience with stage that i feel like you Mm -hmm. can't quite capture on film yeah so yeah it's not really Especially you already have like a movie version. Yeah, yeah. it really doesn't. You already really have a movie version. Like yeah, that. exactly. I yeah. yeah. And again, I prefer this version. Yeah, it would be cool to have like musical numbers and all. But I feel like that I feel like the simplistic storytelling really adds to the idea that like they're putting on a flop. So they're like just doing as little as possible. And then I feel like that really does kind of reflect when the actual like musical number does show up, it kind of like catches you off guard a little, but it's still entertaining mm-hmm. because it's part of the joke. Yeah. I will say though, this, this, this movie kind of reminded me of a, of a musical I seen known as something rotten. And basically mm. it, it's, 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 it's about a story about, you know, making a play. Yeah. In a way. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's like a story about trying to make a story in a way. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. it's it's supposed to be it's i think it's like it's supposed to be based around like uh shakespeare mm. right mm. and um okay like it, it doesn't start like uh, uh, shakespeare's not like the protagonist um it's uh what's the other what's what's the guy's name uh i'm trying to look it up as i go on but <laughs> um hold on well, yeah take your time. but yeah thank you um yeah okay so nick bottom so nick bottom you know he he kind of has it out on william shakespeare and and, you know he does like um he he does like a a, a song called god i hate shakespeare and so basically what he's trying to do is that he's trying to find what shakespeare's next play is going to be and try to make it into his own 
which I think turns out to be Ham Hamlet, and but when he makes the play, it's called Omelet. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> and and the, and, the, and the whole thing is just how him just trying to make the play, only to, only to find out that like <laughs> I, I don't think it was Omelet. He realizes yeah. oh it was called Hamlet. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, but yeah, no, I, I, I think that's really cool. Like, like, yeah, the whole like, uh, story making process. I, I agree. I feel like, yeah, that this, cause this does remind me of some other like movies that I've seen where it's about making a movie, but like, again, there's that whole, Muppets like, take Manhattan. Muppets take Manhattan. Oh, that's such a good point. This is, and yeah. It's about, and we're in Broadway and everything. Yeah, I wasn't even going to make that. I was going to make a stupid connection to like Ed Wood because that's about making movies. But like, you know what? Yes. You're, you're absolutely right. Forget what I was going to go with. No, Muppets Take Manhattan is the perfect comparison because, <laughs> yeah, that's about well, what did you what did you want to go with? I've what said I was going to I was going to I was going to like compare like Ed Wood, which is I love oh. Ed Wood because that's about making movies because it's about like, you know, Ed Wood and the movie. Being, and plus the fact like, you know, that's about that's a movie about a terrible director because ed wood is, was a notorious director who made bad and terrible films like so some of the worst yeah. ever made um like like i don't even like them and you you know me i love a lot of bad movies out there <laughs> so yeah but i agree though muppets take manhattan i feel like I feel like Muppets Take Manhattan is like the good ending of this kind of story <laughs> because they were they were actually oh, yeah, passionate. It's not, well, it's not like they're like doing a get rich quick steam. They're just like no. trying to like you know perform a play. Yeah, because they're That's actually all. passionate about the art. Yeah, of performing exactly. and stuff like that. Yeah, no, I agree. Muppets yeah, Take I, Manhattan, great film. Oh yeah, no. Also, yeah, and I also love um I love um uh, Max and Leo's like um bond with each other throughout the mm. like the film. <laughs> That's why I kind of just joke being like, oh, my God, they're so gay. Like, yeah. why are they so like, <laughs> like, especially like the beginning part where they kind of like meet each other, like after like after Leo freaks out, like they're, they're like they go out, they get like to eat, you know, like they're on that they're at the river and then I like, did that the water fountain. And like, that's when Leo realizes that, like, I can be who I want to be and I'm going to work with you and, and make this play and everything like that. It's just like, like, oh, my God, <laughs> this is yeah. we've got a bromance going on here. Yeah, <laughs> and I think like especially like at the end, like near like the end when like they're trying to like blow up like the place like for some reason, I almost thought Mac, um, uh, Max was about to kiss Leo, but no, they just going for a hug over something. I'm just yeah. like, oh my god, they're so gay. They're so gay. <laughs> gay people. <laughs> <laughs> I love discover. I love discovering Yow Yowie. Yeah, <laughs> that isn't really there in the first place. I love making shit up. Yeah, yeah, I think you can make shit up. That's fine. <laughs> so, oh my god, you, you should have seen me when I kept going on about a bit with with me and, and Crad, and we watched Dan versus. I'm just like, this oh, show's yeah. a toxic yaoi. <laughs> it just won't stop. I, I um, I finally got to see the uh, well, the screenshot Mordo post. I actually do know that uh, that um, Muppet Show episode you're talking. I have, I had no idea that was him. Like he does not look the same at all in that episode. Yeah, but yeah, I do know uh, zero most sell from that Muppet Show episode. He doesn't have his. Was, he doesn't have the terrible hair. That is correct. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he, he has a he has a full thick beard, full thick of hair. Uh, head of hair. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that facial hair. I would like to see more of like more stuff with zero Mostel in there because I feel like this is the one thing I've seen him in where I like recognize it's him. Um, apparently he was in the little drummer boy part two. So that's something I definitely need to watch mm. then. <laughs> I, I've, I have seen that has been really decades. <laughs> wow. I have you, I it's, uh, have you seen the original? Oh yeah. I've seen the original. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, I, 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 it's been a while since I've seen the original too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the uh, the the extended lore of Little Drummer Boy. Yeah, little drum, yeah, Little Drummer uh, those, Boy those, Part Two. The, the sequels of those things are almost always horrible. I'm sure they're um, always yeah. Rankin Bass sequels are notoriously terrible. Ugh. So, but that that's an yeah, episode I for don't a different time. Remember much about that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so well, I'll, how about is there anything else we have to say about the producers? I know I was kind of like uh taking the taking the reins on this one but i just i i really wanted to rewatch this film and i'm i'm so glad you guys obliged and watched it i'm glad you guys watched it mm -hmm. because i love spreading the word about my favorite films 
And so yeah. I really wanted to spread the word about this one. Um, but anyway, is there anything else you guys have to say about it before I get into this Blu-ray? I, I love that the uh, springtime for Hitler melody is playing like through the, uh, the entire film. It just makes it feel that much more raunchy. Yeah. Oh my God, <laughs> yeah. wait, it is. <laughs> like, you put, put it distasteful. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it emanates to the entire film because they're, yeah. They're I mean, the whole movie. Is, for Hitler yeah. The whole movie is Germany. very raunchy for its time because, you know, you see yeah. them like wear like the swastikas, like armbands out in yeah. public in New York. It's I like, can't wear this anymore. You like, can't. I, well, I don't want to wear this. <laughs> I mean, it was pretty risque to do that in the 60s because, you know, considering yeah. that was more closer to World War II, like, I feel right. like I feel like you couldn't even show this movie in Germany at the time because, like, you know, that shit was, like, super no-no at the time. But, right. but I'm glad Ooh, yeah. that, you know, Mel Brooks, who is Jewish, wrote this movie and actually did so, like, in a way that is funny. Like, it's not – I feel like, yes, it's in – like, it's intentionally, like, in bad taste – but in a way that, you know, similar to Blazing Saddles, like, yes, that movie is very much edgy and raunchy, but there's a point to it, you know, like, and, I, and obviously this movie's not as raunchy as Blazing Saddles, like that thing's its whole other beast. But, you know, just the idea of like, kind of making fun of Nazis in that way, I feel like at the time, probably, you would have had people being like, this is in such bad taste, you can't make jokes about that. And it's like, well, you know why not he's making them look like idiots like that's that's part of the joke so so yeah i just i i really appreciate this movie for being the way that it is it's 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 again I, i've said this multiple times it's one of my favorite comedies not my all-time favorite yeah. brooks film i do prefer young frankenstein blazing saddles and Spaceballs a little more but for the amount of for how much i love it and to be only his fourth best in my eyes i mean that just shows you how good of a comedy writer mel brooks is yeah uh, so i've never seen uh blazing saddles mm. um but i put this below space balls above uh, young frankenstein personally i could see that i, I feel like young frankenstein other mel brooks film i feel like young frankenstein for me is a little personal because i love the frankenstein mythos so much um mm -hmm. oh but yeah mordo i highly recommend um I, I think you would really like Spaceballs, um, but I would recommend. No, I want to. I want to. I want to see Spaceballs. I really want to yeah. see it. Oh, it's so funny! It's so funny. Yeah. I, maybe I'm a little biased because I am such a huge Star Wars fan, and plus I watched Spaceballs when I was like I don't know ten or eleven. So like it's it's a childhood yeah. favorite of mine. But it's it's so funny. A lot of people don't like it. Like I've realized that. Like a lot of yeah, people, I'm surprised. Oh, like Mark like Mark what? Hamill doesn't like it. Mark, uh, well, I, I think it's just like, it's it's such a good. Uh, yeah, it's, it's such a I don't know, but I don't know why, so like, funny. even normal people who love Blazing Saddles and Young Frankenstein and those early Brooks films, they watch, like, Spaceballs, and they're just like, oh, this this sucks. It's like, why? It's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't understand it, but, I mean, uh, I mean, people, people like have I don't opinions. understand how you don't like Interstellar. <laughs> yeah, I guess maybe it's that. Maybe, maybe I don't know. <laughs> I, I feel like I need to have somebody actually explain it, because, like, I... I mean, if at the end of the day, it's just I don't find this funny, like, whatever, fine. Like, I get it. There are plenty of comedies out there that, like, I'm told are, like, the funniest movies ever made. And then I watch them and I'm just like, this isn't funny at all. No. So I, mm -hmm. That's definitely happened to me. But Where's the funny? <laughs> Where's the funny? You, we forgot the funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... Oh, I, I would love to do a Spaceballs episode someday. Maybe I'll do it. Oh, you cool. got to have me on for that. Yeah. I got, oh, I, hit me up. I, I, I don't want to plan out anything just yet because I feel like I should watch a bunch of the Star Wars movies first and do an episode, do episodes on those first. But I, mm -hmm. I, I do have a bit of a plan for the Star Wars episodes, but I'm not, I'm not going to reveal them. I'm not, that's, that's later down the line. That's, I have something special Hidden planned Lord. for that. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll get to it someday. Little, this little foreshadowing for all you. Yeah, foreshadowing. Audience. Um, yeah. <laughs> also, I think else? for my, oh, go ahead, I think go for ahead. my final thoughts. Uh, screw you, Tubi, for saying content unavailable when you literally oh. have a site up to watch the producers. Oh, dude! If the produ sure. if this movie was on Tubi, that would be the best thing in the world. But no, of course, Tubi can't be that based. I guess. Ugh. Ugh. I, I guess we're experiencing the fall of Tubi, man. I'm Jeez. so upset. No. I'm so upset. Tubi fell off. Uh, cancel Will Knight. Will Knight's canceled. It's Silver. <laughs> oh, no. oh, Lordy. Um, 
Um, the well, end of Wheel Night. <laughs> the end of Wheel Night would upset Third me impact. greatly. <laughs> tumbling. We just down, make a tumbling. we just make a movie called The End of Wheel Night. He's down, tumbling down. <laughs> Oh, God forbid we film a hospital scene for the Wheel Night movie. <laughs> get, get, get the fuck out of my hospital. <laughs> Disgusting. Pathetic. <laughs> so, uh, this Blu-ray, I have So it anyway, on. Blu-ray. It's, yeah, this Blu-ray, it's uh, a Kino Lorber uh blu-ray which i'm very excited um so yeah we've talked about uh we've talked about like shout factory blu-rays uh we've talked about vinegar syndrome blu-rays kino lorber that's a i feel like well no because i feel like we because yeah so on the showgirls episode me and william we also talked about fritz the cat and my fritz the cat blu-ray that's a kino lorber blu-ray um but they they kino lorber they've done a couple of blu-rays that i own that i really think are real high quality and i really like um so yeah no this movie looked great um it's oh it's it seems to have a couple of uh really interesting looking um special features although oh no i want to mention this so the so you know how like on the back it'll say like um uh you know what other movies the actors are in so it says for Zero Mostel, a funny thing happened on the way to the forum. So I guess that's a movie I need to check out with Zero Mostel in it. But uh-huh. for Gene Wilder, di- <laughs> I, I'll get, I'll, I'll, I'll let you guys. I'll, I, I know you're not going to get this, but it's not Willy Wonka. They, the movie they use for, for like saying like where he's from. Yeah. <laughs> it's a movie. It's a movie called Haunted Honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, wait! wait. Like, I saw, I saw, I, I saw that when I was looking him up on Letterboxd. Yeah. He directed that. Yeah. Okay. I just think it's funny that out of all the movies to have him to advertise that he was in. I mean, I guess it's. Well, I think Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory came out after this. Yeah, but again, like I don't know. It's just that's just kind of interesting. I guess. I guess the uh, Blu-ray print would be <laughs> from. Uh... Yeah, what is well it? after this as well. Yeah, what is this well Blu-ray from? Blu-ray. It's, I think it's from like oh, 2021, so it's pretty fairly recent. Um, yeah. But yeah, and then and then Dick Sean, it says it's a Batman, Mad Mad World, obviously, because that's one of the other big things he was in. And then Kenneth Mars was in What's Up, Doc. I guess they weren't going to mention he was in Little Mermaid. <laughs> yeah, Honeymoon came out in 1986. That's okay. what that. Yeah, interesting. Huh. Unless he was in the 1940 version uh stuff like no, I don't. Yeah, he's definitely in the eighty six. Yeah, it's definitely the eighty six version. Because like, yeah, Gene Wilder was born in like nineteen thirty three, so I don't think he would have been in the forties movie. Um, yeah, they're they're, uh, they're referencing him as a child actor. On yeah. The back. <laughs> and it's interesting because they do mention because when they mention Mel Brooks, they say like legendary director of Blazing Saddles, Young Frankenstein, High Anxiety, History of the World Part One, and Spaceballs. So you know all the classics, but. <laughs> Haunted Honeymoon. That's the movie they wanted to advertise Gene Wilder being in. Yeah, that eighteen percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh. <laughs> well, now I have to watch it. <laughs> Ooh, All right, boy. you've convinced me. So, anyway, bottom line, uh, I love this movie with all my heart. One of my favorite books films. Uh, I'm keeping this Blu-ray. I'm keeping it in the collection. Um, uh, well, so. Would you guys ever own this movie in your collection? Uh, Mordo, would you? Maybe. Okay. <laughs> uh, swine, anything? Yeah, I definitely would for the uh, the right opportunity presents itself. I'd grab a nice. copy of it. I like it. Nice. Oh, I'm, glad. I'm glad. I'll give it a rewatch. Yeah, I'm glad I showed you guys. I'm glad you guys watched it. I'm, yeah. and, I'm, and I'm hoping people in the audience will watch it too because I highly, highly recommend it. It's, again, one of my favorite Brooks films um so yeah guys i think we did it what what do you think do you think we did it now we gotta do is uh we just gotta uh render it at half speed and we'll uh break the record yeah exactly (laughs) yeah william anything to add slavery was bad waka waka that's great, William. That's a good point, Burble. So true, so true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah thank you, thank you, William. Uh, hey, so Nevermore, say something funny.
Wait, what? Brilliant. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mordo, I'm going to let you go first because this was a Nolan episode. You're you're the Nolan episode uh, connoisseur. Please shout out your stuff, dude. Where can people find you? Uh, Missouri. <laughs> <laughs> okay no for real uh you know um you know you can find me on youtube um i'm i'm find me on twitter i i know i still have a blue sky as just in in, in tumblr they're not really that active as much but you know they're they're there um uh, a letterbox of course if you ever want to know what the heck i'm watching and um i don't know i, I don't see any new social medias that i've been invested in lately Mm -hmm. so usual links yeah cool excellent all right swine dude uh shout out your stuff where can people find you yeah uh as always uh find me on youtube at uncultured swine studios for uh uh i'm sure i'll make something here eventually um either uh, as uh, i'll I'll make yeah i'll be uh whether it's a another video Video game type, Scott the Was type video or short films, um, or maybe I've considered doing movie analysis. I'll, I'll make something again eventually. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, as always on Twitter at Uncultured Swine. And yeah, on Letterbox as well. You can find that link in the description, I'm sure. I'm sure too. Uh, and yeah, keep keep an eye out for me at your local cinemas too, as I'll be a, a little uh, inside scoop uh, Shrek 2 Retold. <gasps> uh releases this year oh that's right <gasps> oh, let's dude. go so you can see me in that on the i got, I got to see the uh our theatrical premiere was last september that was that was a pretty cool experience my uh no like i think like i remember hearing about 19 it 19 year old mug was on the big screen nice. I, I remember hearing about it and then like buster <laughs> told me that you were you were sitting right next to him and you guys didn't realize yeah that was a complete coincidence that was funny <laughs> Oh, Mal. Oh. Yeah, it's like, what are you here for? Oh, yeah, I know this guy named uh, named James. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's oh, yeah. I, you're not going to believe this. Uh, <laughs> I know him, too. Yeah. Too, too many movies uh, guests unintentionally going to the same premiere. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Oh. Yeah, that'll be. I, it was supposed to come out in January. We keep pushing it off. It'll come. It's the 20th anniversary. It's got to come out this year. It'll be out when it's out. Yeah, I, I, I like that. Yeah, I, I filmed my scenes five more than five years ago. Yeah, at this point. it's been a while. <laughs> oh yeah. my god, I guess, I guess not quite five years ago actually. Yeah, we five years this August. Well, it's still, uh, yeah, it's still, I feel like a lot because I feel like because the first one came out in 2018, like, and I feel like people immediately yeah. were like, "All right, let's get started on you know the the sequel already." So, yeah, no, it, it has been a while. Which I mean, I get it. There's <laughs> there's a lot that needs to go into it. I'm sure. Yeah, that was like, that was the first live action like video ever like yeah like acted and directed no <laughs> kidding wow i wish i could redo it but yeah it was like, I oh. also and, yeah and it still has yet to come it. out that's interesting though yeah it's funny how time works yeah it was, it was not my best work but yeah it's uh, fun. you know you can only go <laughs> up of course of course yeah well well yeah anyway cool thank thank you guys so much for coming on the prestige episode like this was this was huge this was this was awesome i'm so glad we were able to do this um because i just I, again these two movies i needed to rewatch them and they're definite keeps for the collection and i'm, I'm a, i appreciate that you two were here to, along along the journey so to say yeah yeah thank you for having me on once again uh, yeah man prestige one of my favorite movies this, i'm glad this... to get the opportunity to talk about it this was the this this I will be haunted by this movie forever. Yeah, haunted by the movie forever. <laughs> da, da, da. That's a pretty good da, movie. Da, 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 you're gonna be haunted by a movie. This is a good one. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> so yeah, thanks so much, and thank you, the listener, for listening to today's episode. If you want to support the show, give a like, give a comment. Listen to us on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or on YouTube. That's fine too. Doesn't matter. Today's yeah, episode thanks. was sponsored by. And as gay always, people. use the uh, secret keyword um, "banana cream pie" in the comments. Uh, so, uh, someday we'll get the, the someday we'll get them to comment "banana cream pie" in the comments. I'm, we'll, I'm we'll not, keep I'm trying. Not sure if you, <laughs> I'm not sure if you heard, but I said today's episode was sponsored by gay people. <laughs> <laughs> thank you gay people thank you gay treat people your y- treat your yaoi well 
All right, I'm gonna go run to your rate. I'm gonna run to Raising Cane's Attack on Titan Knight with the boys. Ooh, I could go over some Raising Cane's. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't have time tonight. Goodbye, everybody. I'm gonna make us all disappear now. Uh, snap. Uh, feeding, uh, <laughs> Boom. Magic. <laughs> what a world. What a world. What a world. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's perfect. That's perfect. All right, and then swine. Let me t let me type down. Let me type in the chat what I want you to say. Like, hello, Mordo. This is uncultured. Swine. Hello, Mordo. This is God. <laughs> yeah, it's just. Oh my God! Again in the same week. First he's telling me to talk about the yum, make a yummo cut of Beauty and the Beast. And now, what do you want now? <laughs> Am I doing something wrong, my lord? I want the deluxe cut of the Yemo cut. The Yemo cut was How a huge success. I want a deluxe cut. <laughs> How deluxe are we talking? Um, I want you to add two characters. Okay. Name them. No, that's your job. You, you gotta make. You gotta you go deep into the uh, deep in the lore and find two. Um, find two um, fan favorites. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. So what I wrote in uh, chat there. Hello, this is Yoshi. Oh my God, Yoshi uh, Matt from Sparks Iris <laughs> server Discord. Hi everybody who's watching. Right, I don't know. I don't, I don't think know. they know much. 